Good evening, everybody. Uh, Tim is still having some technical difficulties with his Bluetooth, so we are going to start without him and let him kind of catch up as soon as he gets that uh, technical issue resolved. So tonight, <laughs> it is just me, your Grand High Priest, Holy Order of the Jab. <laughs> And our friend Deadwood Dale. Dale, how's it going today? Uh, pretty good. A lot of funny stuff in the news. Made a video earlier today about these teachers. They got 10 teachers going to Sioux Falls, South Dakota for a hockey game. Uh, halftime, they they played this game where they put $5,000 in single dollar bills on a carpet in the middle of the rank. And they just told these teachers, you can have as much as you want. You just got to stuff it in your shirt. And and do that all within five minutes. You get all all the money you want in singles. Like I don't think strippers are treated that poorly, but they managed to do that to these teachers, and everyone's freaking out because they said it's dystopian. The exact words from people on Twitter: it's dystopian to have teachers on their on their hands and knees fighting over money. <laughs> so I'm here just like fuck teachers, you know. Not all teachers. Some teachers are cool, but most of them are shitheads. Most of them deserve their fate in life. So that's how I'm doing. <laughs> well, you know, a question about that, because, like, I don't know. Is it dystopian when they have, like, the supermarket dash, like, game shows, or, like, game shows in general? Is that dystopian? Yeah, I mean, they do this all the time at sports games, like the basketball games, hockey right. games. They do it all the time for a variety of things. And I have a weird feeling that if it were police officers doing the exact same thing, uh, firefighters, EMTs, no one would care. Not one person would care. But for some reason, teachers are precious. You know, it's kind of like, Greg, when they say that, uh, I think this is a Bill Burr bit too, that being a mother is the hardest job, right? Or like being a teacher is the hardest job in the world because you have to deal with difficult children. Uh, <laughs> I don't think it's it's a difficult job. Uh, it might be harder, but there are a lot of really difficult jobs out there. I would say most physical jobs are probably harder than being a teacher. So uh, people jumping to the defense, simping for teachers, simping for the teachers' unions, just because uh, they're they're being made fun of at this event. Everyone's having a good laugh at their expense. It, it, it's asinine. Well, they weren't forced to participate in it either. They could have said no, right? Yeah. I, I don't know. I, like, no. This idea of, like, we 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 put these professions in, in these elevated positions, like, oh, they're the real heroes. This group is the heroes, you know, during <laughs> during pandemic, it's the it's the nurses and the first responders. But that wasn't good enough. Then it was like, oh, if you're if you're working at a gas station that didn't close due to the pandemic, you're the real hero. Yeah, <laughs> like everybody's a fucking hero. And it's like, I don't think you guys know what hero means. Um, doing a job doesn't make you a hero. Even being a police officer or a firefighter or a soldier doesn't necessarily make you a hero. It's what you do in that position. So if you're risking your life to save somebody else's, that's pretty heroic. Teaching some kid how to read uh, uh, green eggs and ham is important. It's a job that needs to be done. So is a plumber's. You're not a hero. Yeah. You're just doing your damn job and you're getting paid for it. So, you know, it's not like you're volunteering and getting nothing back in return for it. So I hate this whole everything is a hero. It was single moms are a hero and, you know, single dads are a hero and teachers are heroes and, and everybody's a fucking hero. Well, then why is this world so shitty if it's so goddamn full of heroes? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And you're a hero if you get the vaccine. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You're doing your part. You're patriotic. You're a patriotic American if you get your jab, everybody. 
And that's patently incorrect. You are faithful if you get the jab. If everyone can be a hero, if everyone's a hero, I don't know if I want to be on this planet anymore. Right. I'm I'm waiting for actual historic, you know, heroic events to take place. And 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 then then I will say, like, okay, if you do something heroic, that makes you a hero. If you do your job, that I'm sorry, that you know, that doesn't necessarily make you a hero. Even like, you know, uh firefighters and, and stuff like that. It's like, yeah, you, you stood outside the house and in the holes at the fire. You never went in. You never retrieved anybody. You were at a safe distance aiming your fire hose. Again, important work, but I didn't think you did anything heroic there, buddy. Right. How's it going, Tim? I would like to just talk for a minute about the Here comes organization. Here about Microsoft. <laughs> yeah. Because here's what it was. It was this fucking cumulative update. So I come home, you know, and I work out and I make my dinner. I eat my dinner right here and everything's fine. And then this update, 8.02 p.m. Central. And I'm like, oh, okay, whatever. I'm not doing an update. And then uh, I go to turn on my headset because I'm going to listen to some stuff, try and get ready for the stream. And, you know, uh, it says whatever it says, uh, power on battery high nothing else and i'm like uh where's that connected at and then i go to the thing and bluetooth switches there and devices it disappears and as soon as it what did it take me about 40 minutes to do that install 40 mm -hmm. minutes and guess what after the computer restarted the fucking bluetooth is back so here's what happens these little cocksuckers they want to force you to update you know, so they take a piece of functionality away. It used they used to do it with like Wi-Fi and stuff like that. Like your Wi-Fi uh, uh, drivers would disappear, and then up oh, I updated. You know, now now I can uh, I can use that functionality again. They're pieces of shit, and if I had my way, I'd string them up by their balls, and then with a pair of blunt scissors, I would cut them off at the balls. That's how fucking pissed off <laughs> Ooh, I am right now. The rounded edge safety scissors that can't even fucking cut paper. Yeah. So anyway, <laughs> here we are. Uh, have we said hi to the chat yet? We have not. We were just about to get there and then you popped in. So, hey, Speaking, All right. Let's ahead. do it. And I want to ask you guys in a minute what the hell you were talking about because from the context, I have no idea. Teresa <laughs> showed up early as usual. What's going on? Space Dinosaur. Now, this guy right here commented on my last video, and he was actually talking about something I thought about adding to the video, and it's the classic Lensman series of science fiction books going, shit, I think all the way back to the 1930s, at least the 1940s, um, and I have some of those books. They've only adapted it once, and it was an anime in the late 80s, I believe, and also comics based on the anime. Not manga, actual comics. I have uh, like one issue I found in an old resale shop. But yeah, thanks for joining uh, the channel and all that stuff. Timon's in the house. Yeah, again, and I just talked about that. Fractured filters in the house. What's going on? The real Kim Shady. What is going on? Haven't seen you in a while. Hope you're doing well and thanks for being here, pal. Haven't seen you in a long time, like I said. Leaf Larson, 13, a member in the house. There's Mr. Technical Dif Difficulties reporter, Melissa Lord in the house. <laughs> Give it the jab. Um, it'll cure everything. Yeah, the jab is that stupid fucking update. Thanks for being here, Melissa. Uh, let's see. Fuck Norris is in the house. The new job man, Fuck Norris, that he sounds like he's excited about. So good for you, buddy. Trey Courtney's here, as always. What's going on, Trey? Zax is here. Thanks for all the recent support, Zax. Decepticons, Cave of Toys, and Villains. I love those double kickstands. That's that's badass. <laughs> There's Blake, a.k.a. Dan Blackroyd. What's going on? Uh, I need to salty Texas Sea. Yeah, we do. Yeah. Should I? You mean the Transformers movie? 
No, no, Trading Places. Oh, Trading Places, yeah. Christmas it's movie. He, he, he plays Santa Very Claus true, very bit. true. It is, yes. If it takes place during Christmas and has any Christmassy stuff, it's a Christmas movie. That's Dan, Dan Aykroyd, or Dan Blackroyd, not only does blackface, he does Santa Claus. No. Very true, yes. Back when it was was okay to do it, so... Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's everyone. If I missed you, then by no means was it on purpose. So, what in the hell were you guys talking about? Oh, for added context, it was a, it was like a little charity game for teachers in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, uh, during a junior. Oh, was it the money grubbing thing? Yeah, yeah, where they were fighting over the the single dollar bills. Yes. I saw that. I think it was you that had retweeted it and quote tweeted it. And I saw that and I immediately thought of like million dollar man, Ted DiBiase's theme. Like, you know, when he would, <laughs> when he would pay money to do stuff, you know, and yeah, <laughs> you know, yes. you're there grubbing for the money, you know, Virgil, give him another hundred. Um, yeah. That's the first <laughs> thing I thought of just, just from the uh, a chapter from the everything I ever needed to know, I learned by watching pro wrestling book. So, yeah, there you go. Well, and that kind of slipped into a conversation about uh, how everybody and everything and every profession's a damn hero these days, and how kind of stupid that is. You mean hero as in like uh, sarcastically? Well, no, I mean they mean it seriously. Like you know. Like teachers are heroes, firefighters are heroes, police are heroes, armed service people are heroes, frontline workers front are heroes. Frontline workers. Yeah, frontline workers are heroes. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody's a damn hero. For doing yeah, a job they get paid for. Everyone gets a participation trophy ribbon too. Just like, you know, I uh I retweeted today, and I know who this guy is, this twat, um, this Star Wars guy. He's like, it's okay to like Disney and pre-Disney Star Wars and wiser division and EU elitists and all this. He literally said that, EU elitists. And I'm like, well, um, yeah, it's okay to not have standards, right? And everyone, if you're writing Disney Star Wars and you suck, you you know, you get credit anyway, just for trying. Um, uh, he probably I, blocked me at this point. I haven't checked, but I know who the guy is. I've seen him around for like five years on his Facebook page and stuff. But well, yeah, if it's okay to uh, like elitist. it, then why isn't it okay not to like it? Exactly. He's like, there's so much division. But speaking of which, let's check this out. <laughs> Man, that's funky. Yeah, you yeah, sent me it's... that. What? Yeah, you sent me that. I didn't know what it was about, though, at first. I, did I send you that? And I yeah. didn't send you what I... I meant to send you my members only, which I was going to bring up when I started the stream. If you're a member of the channel, then early this morning... Yeah, not last night. Early this morning, I uh, posted a video that's like a... It's, it's a prototype... It's a let me put it this way. It's a prototype teaser of a teaser of my project. Like it's just like, hey, look at this video, and this is kind of just something to make you think about on my creative project. I meant to send you that one, so sorry I sent you the wrong link. Yeah, from, I was uh, like, drive. I don't understand so. this. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's something we started calling ourselves because. We were um, called that about a year ago when the Mandalorian stuff blew up. And the reason that yep. we don't like the Mandalorian and we criticize it is because we're EU elitists. And EU stands for Expanded Universe of Star Wars. Yes. So we kind of embraced it. Um, just like the N-word, we used it as an empowering term. And that's <laughs> we're what taking we it back. <laughs> yeah. Yes. 
anyway, so yeah, guys, like if you are interested in seeing that, it's you know, Greg's seen it. It's nothing major. It's just mm -hmm. uh just a little teaser. It's it's not anything I would release publicly. It's just hey, let's see if uh this gets you interested in stuff. And uh I thought it was pretty chilly and I watched it a few times at work today in between bullshit. So um yeah, become a member of the channel if you're if you're interested in seeing stuff like that. Um, but yeah, guys, we are here. It's Tuesday night, our new night. Um, our new night. After the great of course, start. <laughs> yeah. Of course, I look. Let me go to YouTube and refresh here and see. We have people streaming, but I can tell you for sure that this stream right here certainly is the smartest stream by far so definitely yeah. definitely come to this one if you want to get the takes that will actually make you think and arrive at logical conclusions absolutely. wouldn't you gentlemen agree absolutely everyone else oh, who's hardly. streaming right now they're full of shit uh, i don't like them <laughs> they can go to hell and they, they can die there <laughs> no, i'm just kidding i'm just kidding We're, but i want to say that yeah it's fun to say it, you know, just like what I said about Microsoft earlier. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure this stream is already limited. We got our first limited um, last week. It's been a while, shockingly. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, Tim, there's something yeah. I've been waiting to do all day long. Damn it. No, but it's... <sighs> Here's the thing. This, this chick... You could hear her hand snaking into the bag <laughs> every time. This like the whole time, was it like a family size? It bag was slow though. It was slow. It was like, oh, and she's probably like three rows away from me. But I feel like getting up, going to the break room. Here's a bowl. Just pour it into the bowl. Then you can pick it up, and then you can chew it. You don't have to like snake your hand into the bag and pull one out. Crunch, and I couldn't even hear the crunch. She was so far away. But and then there's this old lady on the other side of the wall, <laughs> and it's literally, and I'm not exaggerating. If she's not on the phone, her her click pen, she's clicking oh, oh. it like click 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 click. And even like my boss and a couple of teammates are like, we have to do something about this. It's like, all right, do you want to be the one to tell her, her boss, or do you want me to do it? Yeah, that. It's like constant. And I'm like, don't you realize you spurg like you're fucking annoying everyone else around you? And it's disrespectful and, and inconsiderate. Maybe I just put on my music or listen to YouTube or something. Slow down on the caffeine a little bit if you got that much kind of like, you know, you're that many ticks going on, like. Lay yeah. off the caffeine just a little bit. Maybe go decaf on the second cup. Yeah. Um. So we're going to talk about different stuff today, but something came up, I believe. Uh, a couple of things came up that we originally weren't going to cover. But let's go ahead, and we haven't gotten a chance to talk about this since my video came out. And then Dale did one, and it's Cowboy Bebop. And here's where I got really scared because I watched your video, Dale, and you, you said cowboy bebop. And I thought that that's how you pronounce it. Really? Yeah. So I'm like, I made this video, you know, and I pronounce <laughs> it the other way the whole time. And I'm like, no, that's, that's, that's like a word bebop, you know? And then you're like, oh, I just say that to piss people off. And I'm like, oh, man, you scared me. I was going to say, he said I... in his video, he just says it to irritate people. I, that, and that well, actually yeah, got a he... really big chuckle out of me. <laughs> like, yeah. Because I noticed he it, didn't like, say it right away. Bad That's bad I'm like, oh, no, I've been saying it wrong, you know. <laughs> yeah, I like doing that. Like, uh, you know, got to keep people on their toes. Yeah. You definitely do that with us. But I'm sure everyone has seen the video in the chat um it and coach clear floss is in the house what's going what's going on coach it uh has reached like 100 views i think so i'm pretty sure everyone's seen it and my point in it is that okay you know it's we're not going to renew it it's canceled whatever yay yay um 
we won and all this stuff. It's like, how did you win? Because we're going to keep on subscribing to Netflix, right? For the 4K um, option and the highest tier and all that stuff. Um, but just because we talked about a show that we probably never watched the original source material, we talked about it and said it's bad. And we talked about the girl, you know, yeah, whatever her name is, uh, Pineda. We talked about her. Then it got canceled, and and yeah, let's pat ourselves on the back. That was the whole point of my video. It's like this is just a show that didn't succeed for Netflix, and they canceled it, and they're not going to stop doing anime. They're going to keep on trying until they get it right because it's probably cheap to get the rights, and then obviously the budget was so fucking low on this shit right? That they'll keep on trying that until something does stick. They'll keep trying it until they get it right. And I think it's interesting because um, like you'll get a lot of people who have never even watched it or they don't have any investment in it at all, and they feel so strongly about it needing to be canceled. Yeah. Yeah, if you don't if you've never seen the original, like why do you why do you care, you know? Because for for one thing canceled on Netflix, something else terrible is going to continue. Like these You know what's bad about Netflix are these dog shit documentaries they have. Just oh, absolute yeah. dog shit, like with horrible messaging and and logic and bias and all that stuff. So we'll keep on getting those and people will watch them and then think that they're smart, right? Because they saw a Netflix on documentary about a given topic. So it's not really a win, like I said in my no. video. It's Go absolutely ahead, not a win. Because look, do you can I does anybody honestly think that the Netflix executives, when they canceled that show, said like, oh, yeah, we really learned our lesson here. Go woke, go broke. We won't do this again. Or do you think yeah, the message yeah. was is this this show sucked and it didn't work, so we're canceling it? Like, which do you think which which of those two sentences do you think the Netflix executives and the people in charge of programming at Netflix said? It's it's the one where they, that show just didn't work. We're going to cancel it. We're going to yeah. cut our losses and run. There's no victory in them just canceling a bad show. No. This isn't some like victory for you know. Oh, Netflix is going base now. They're they, they they're canceling this woke this woke bebop show. No, <laughs> it, it just Netflix cancels shit all the time. Even good shit they cancel. Yes. Just because that's what I was saying, yeah, that's what they do. Like they're they're throwing so much shit against the wall to see what sticks. They don't even fucking care. Mm -mm. They're just like, well, that one didn't work. Try a different one, and and they'll just shuffle it out without any kind of real thought as to like, well, you know, they didn't do any post mortem and going, well, what didn't work about this show? No, they're just going. People didn't watch it. Cancel it. Yep. Because good shows get canceled all the time. And that happens on network TV as well. And some of the best shows were on the bubble for years. Constantly like waiting late into the season to see if they were even going to be picked up for the next season. An example of that would be The Office, right? Yep. That show was on the bubble like damn near every year of, of its existence. At least the first two or three, yeah. I think even after that, like it was always kind of like, eh, is this good spot to end it or not? And like, there's that happens all the time. And some shows are really good. They just don't get an audience and they cancel them because with network TV, it's a little different because there's only so many time slots and prime time in a week. So you got to put your best shit out there and your most profitable shit. That's why everything went reality TV because it's insanely fucking cheap. You can give million dollar prizes away. That's nothing. I mean, that's that's one actor's half a day of work on Friends. Yeah. I mean, by comparison, and that's the grand prize. You know, something like Survivor or whatever. Like these shows are insanely freaking cheap to produce because the only it's only the host that you got to get back, and generally they're pretty replaceable. So that's why everybody went. That's why reality TV blew up. 
fucking right. cheap and it fills the time slots. It makes money. But Netflix, no, they didn't learn a goddamn thing. That there is no victory in this one. Um, I guess it's just to, to laugh at the person that was was saying that the woke things. I, I you know, I, I go ahead. I guess do your victory dance there. But like, you didn't. There's no in the culture war. This isn't even a minor victory. This is this is nothing. Yeah, look look what Kim Shady says here. Like, MOTU is still going. Yeah, there you go. So, because that draws an which, audience. Yeah, which is great. Half the audience it means, hates it, but it's still drawing an audience. Yeah, and it's great because it means like thirty videos a day from the various channels. You know. Yeah, there's uh there's someone in the chat. What about uh, he's a regular on my channel? Uh, oh, so hey, he's what's like up? A, what about? I didn't see a comics you. guy. He has the right idea here. Cancel Netflix. That's winning because maps love Netflix. Oh, I, yes. Yeah. yeah. He, he meant to capitalize. It's an acronym. Yes. Yeah. There are people who should go through the process I described about Microsoft earlier. That should be their punishment for being a map. Yeah. Can we say that? Can we say that? What it's it's minor attracted person, aka a uh, cheese pizza person. Cheese yeah. pizza lover. Yeah, we mm -hmm. use the the euphemism minor attracted. Yeah. Yeah, that's what they call themselves, right? Or if or you do say they have the a P word, I think the P word's the dangerous one. Yeah. But that's what they call themselves, right? Because I think I've seen tweets out there yeah. of yeah guys the slippery slope to it, for the future and to honor the the dearly departed and the the actor of the hulk let's just call him jojo's from now on yeah <laughs> i get people, that reference minor attracted people are jojo's that's the new word for it yeah i like that that's why I'm gonna. That's from now on. That's why I'm gonna refer to them. Is they're all they're just a bunch of JoJo's. That works for me. Absolutely. But yeah, you're right. Um, it, it, it's amazing, and and the streaming. The the horrible thing about streaming. I mean, it's massively convenient. You have a you have a massive library at your fingertips. Like I get it. But these services, there's no there's no meritocracy. No, and you don't get to support one TV show and not another because you know their their business model isn't ad revenue based at least not yet it's subscription based so if you subscribe to one show you're paying for all of them mm -hmm. so there's not really a way to kind of vote with your wallet unless it's just all off all no. But as soon as you, you pick it up to watch the next Tiger King or The Witcher or whatever, you're voting yes for all the other shit, too. Just just know that. You can't support you can't support gay karate show without supporting cuties. That's just the truth. Yeah. And they even came forward and said themselves that they don't really care about the numbers, you know, that the people who don't like it. Even right. if it's even if they get like uh, ratioed on Rotten Tomatoes or something, they don't care because they know they're going to yeah. get just enough to validate their existence. Yeah, Trey Courtney talking about Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Now, if they were smart, they would do that movie. But Leatherface and them are going after maps. I think a lot of people would tune in for that. Oh yeah, yeah. Because especially after all the people getting bent out of shape over, what was it, Michael Myers hating gay people or something. <laughs> and that last movie? I think so. That was a lot of people freaking out over something like that. Hating so, gay people. Wow. I, I, that's what they said. It was probably an overreaction because he happened to kill someone who was gay. Jeez. In a movie where he's just slaughtering people left and right. Right. If a gay person gets in the way, then hey, you know, the knife isn't going to discriminate. You guys remember when the second It movie, uh, the the modern one came out? And people I remember were freaking when it came out. out. Yeah. 
they're freaking out because Pennywise killed a gay couple. Yes, I do remember that, actually. That was funny because, you know, Stephen King's a shit lib and... Uh, <laughs> Right. You know, he's always he's always kissing other people's asses on Twitter. And then he got a raft of shit for that. Well, and that brings up some the other thing I think I was going to bring up tonight that wasn't on the docket because I didn't see it until after I created the stream. But J.K. Rowling. She's. Oh, yeah. yeah. And here's the thing. I think I I think I added a comment to Ryan Kennel's video that he put out on this. And here's the thing. I don't think J.K. Rowling would align with any of us on this panel politically. <clears throat> but but she is what I would call a sane opponent, you know, that that recognizes um, take she recognizes reality and the fact that these weirdos want to be catered to and she won't do it. It's not good enough for them. The fact that you she votes the way they do um, and probably agrees with them on 98% of the stuff. The fact that she will not acknowledge their, their selfish, um, uh, personalized need to be recognized as a weirdo. Um, that they don't like her. And how sad is that? And that's, again... I don't want anyone on our side to make the mistake of let's lionize J.K. Rowling, right? This has happened before with these other people, Dave Chappelle and all them. There's one thing that we probably agree on, right? We don't we yeah. don't want them to get canceled, but all this other stuff, it's like, you know, like, gosh, I'm not going to lionize them because they wouldn't, I guarantee they wouldn't lionize anyone on our side that were being canceled, period. And I think, I mean... I I would like to add to that because it's not even so much needing to agree on everything. And I, I've talked about this on, on my streams before with Dave Chappelle. I, again, like I, I probably don't agree with him politically on many things, but his reasoning is different. His reasoning yes. is sane. It, it could be where I disagree with him on, um, uh, on something, you know, like, like abortion. But then he'll he'll make it funny. His reasoning is funny. If you get to kill it, I should be able to abandon it. That's yeah. what he was saying. He's like, ladies, I'm I'm all for you killing them, as long as I get to leave them. Yeah. So it, it's weird, but it's not the way that we're used to these people. Uh, it's not their normal, not their usual reasoning. Right. Usually when we're interacting with these these crazies on social media, it's just fuck you because you have a different opinion and you're a Nazi because you're different. There's no right. it's not clever. It's not thought out like you can tell these people did not spend a minute to think about any of these things. They right. just they go with the flow. They repeat talking points someone else has. And what's so refreshing about Dave Chappelle, and I think I'm starting to see that from J.K. Rowling is that it's not just repeating the usual talking points. It feels like they're actually speaking for themselves. And she's pointing out specific things that are like, <clears throat> this is fucking crazy. In the, sp in the specific in instance, and, and she's gotten in trouble for this, for you know stuff before. So this isn't like the first go around for her. But this is about the police arresting a rapist. The rapist then identifies himself, identifies as a woman, so they throw the rapist in a woman's prison. Like, that's just batshit crazy stupid policy. Like, I don't know how you could possibly be like, well, yeah, if they say they're, they, they feel like a woman, but they're rapists. You might not want to put them in a prison with a bunch of women. That's yeah. just really stupid. And as far as the lionizing thing goes, it, it comes down, it's very, very basic. It's about the argument, not the person. Yep. So when a person like Dave Chappelle makes a good argument, we can go, good argument. 
we, you know, Dave Chappelle is right in this particular case. Not Dave Chappelle is now the greatest person ever, or maybe like a Gina Carano. Yeah, I was about to say, I is agree. Dave going to make movies with Ben Shapiro? You know. Yeah, like oh, I like what she said there. That was a good point, and that's the deal. That was a good point. That's separate from the person. And we get yep. too much into it. And politics does this all the time. It's it's cult of personality in, instead of what they're saying, what they believe in. And we should always focus on what they're saying and what they believe in and push the other part of it. The fact that it's J.K. Rowling or it's, it's some, you know, and, and because the right does this all the time. Every time we find somebody that's a conservative in Hollywood, it's like we all jump on their bandwagon. I'd say we generally, I don't. But right. like, oh yeah, Dean Cain's a great actor because I like his political views. Like, right. <laughs> you may have liked the Superman show, but I don't know if you could really say he's a great actor. You know, same with Kevin Sorbo. You know, I, I'm sure he's nice guys and everything, but like, I'm not willing to say that you know the the man's gotten gypped for Emmys or something because I happen to agree with his his policy positions on X, Y, and Z. But you know, argue the argument, not the person. And like life would be so much simpler. Don't lionize J.K. Rowling, and she's right in this case because, like I said, what she's saying is the most basic, common sense, brainless position a person could possibly have. Don't put a penis individual, because that's what she referred to it as on in her tweet. Wow. In with women. In prison. That's a makes bad sense. idea. Yeah, that makes sense. Like, who, who's for that? It'd be like, we're worried about how criminals, violent criminals, identify themselves. Personally, I think part of their punishment should be that they have to be dead named by every single guard every single day. <laughs> <laughs> Because they're violent criminals. I don't give a fuck how they feel or who they think they are. Fuck you. You're fucking rapists. You shouldn't even be alive, much less fucking worried about what you know gender you're in and what you know it would offend you to be in in the in the prison with your biological gender. That's just fucking nuts. And people like you know, and kudos kudos to her for having the guts to come out because she's going to come under fire and cancel this and cancel that. She's already made her money, so she's she's in a position of uh, you know where it's relatively easy because what she got, what she she's, can't take her billions away from her. She's got and fuck she's you fucking, money. Yeah, she's got fuck you money forever. Mm -hmm. And also, um, like we were talking about being so quick to celebrate people, there's also the thing of uh, being quick to crucify someone over a, a, an opinion because you're so used to uh, the best way because this just happened recently for the new mm -hmm. CEO of Twitter you guys know uh, Parag Agrawal he's he's the guy who replaced Jack Dorsey and yep. they someone people dug up a tweet he made like 11 years ago and what he said I'm going to paraphrase it to the best of my ability. It was something like if if you're willing to if you think that all Muslims are terrorists, then it's fair enough for me to assume that all white people are racists. That was the tweet. And people took that to mean, god, he's going to be even worse than Jack Dorsey. This is just the most uh he, he's going to be bashing on white people all the time. And I took that tweet a little bit differently because to me, that was just a statement on uh, blanket statements, right? It wasn't so much he's going to be bashing white people. It's uh, from the perspective of a man who's probably, who has relatives who are probably Muslim and that's why he felt so strongly about it. So people are so... Uh, yeah, just look him up real quick. Prague Agrawal. Yeah. And I just, uh, people really look for reasons to just freak out. 
He was, he was you, quoting somebody in that as well. Yeah, it was it was a Daily Show uh, tweet on Comedy Central. Mm-hmm. It was another Indian yeah. guy. It was another Indian guy. So, you know, people, they, they like to exclude context when it, it's convenient to their argument or when it's convenient to their attack on someone. And I think, yeah, it would be great to just see it in full the actual tweet or, you know, a quote of the tweet. But I believe it was something to that effect of, you know, if you think all Muslims are terrorists, okay. why is it wrong for me to, to assume that is. all? Yeah. If they are not gonna make a distinction between Muslims and extremists, then why should I distinguish between white people and racists? Yeah. That's what it says. And it was in quotations too, which is something that people forgot about. They just looked at it and they said, "Oh, he's he's freaking out on on white people. He hated white people all the way back in 2010. What is, what kind of CEO is he going to be? He's going to be banning all banning people just for their race on Twitter." <laughs> so we got to be, you know, we got to cool our jets no, a bit. You're right. Every, you're right. I, and I, you're I said in my video. Dale. I made a video yeah. about it. I'm like, that's that's actually a fair statement. <laughs> I, I remember you saying that in your video. Yeah. Well, that's yeah, so the whole statement on that. top of it. So it's like, even if it felt that way and it was the worst thing in the world, it's like that's not necessarily his beliefs currently, and in his current position, and that's not how he's going to lead the country, the company. However, I will say, and this is weird. I don't know. This, are you guys noticing this on Twitter lately? I get these like recommended topics. Right. And every yep. time it's a tweet from a very leftist uh, blue check mark. And it doesn't even match the topic that they say it is. It'd be like, you know, it, it, I forget the last example. Like, I keep getting tweets from Molly Chung or whatever her name is. I, I hate her. I just blocked her now because I'm just like, I, like, but it, it seems to me like, like, Twitter has altered its little algorithm there and it's recommending a lot of topics and people that I would, I'm like, why is this in my feed? And then I see it's like, yeah. oh, this is like, would you like to follow this topic? I'm like, but that's not even related to the topic. You know, it's somebody, you know, who's, you know, having a heart attack about text me- text messages on December 6th, you know? Right. Which by Well, the here's, way, here's the thing. Oh my God. That's... Go ahead. The thing, the thing I, with I per- to that. Oh yeah, I, I get the same stuff. But the thing with Paragas and and to take Dale's point to the next uh, progression is that if we are going to criticize him for that, because we know he's going to do some shit stuff, right? He's going to do it. So let's criticize him for the shit stuff he starts doing as the CEO, not for something he did eleven years ago. It's a waste of energy. Because I I just I just get the sense that he is going to change a bunch of stuff and probably be a piece of shit. But I'm not worried about a tweet from 11 years ago. It was just something someone found and it got propagated and it's on all the websites and all that type of stuff. So sound point that you made there. And speaking of going back to your little thing, Greg, um, did you see what happened to me on Facebook today? I put a tweet Mm -hmm. out there of a screenshot yeah, I was like oh. scrolling through and sometimes these recommended pages will come up and a lot of them are of like uh, cars and trucks with very skimpily dressed women. And I like to follow those pages because if I'm scrolling in my newsfeed and I get a surprise, it's kind of nice. So I'm like, hey, I like this one. And I hit follow and then that pop up. You cannot follow this page because you've been naughty. I'm like, what the hell's going on? So I went to something totally random that I wasn't already following like some business or some shit like that follow. I got the same message. So something has happened to where they've blocked me from following new pages. And I've never heard of that phenomenon before. I Googled it with specific search parameters and I couldn't find anyone else talking about it. So I don't know if that's a new thing that Facebook is doing where they think that you're a radical. So they won't let you follow pages anymore. Have you guys heard of that? I don't use Facebook. I think Facebook's crap. I would rather use Reddit because it's it's kind of the same setup where you just have private groups and 
talk to people there. Twitter is more of like of the public social media. Um, I don't know. Facebook, the whole selling information, I, I never trusted them after that. It says, yeah. you can't follow pages right now. To prevent any misuse, we've temporarily restricted your ability to use this feature on Facebook. You can try again later. Option one, okay. Option two, disagree with decision. So. Yeah. Uh, the only thing I... I have Facebook. I almost never like every time I log into it, it's like my notification. You're my friend bells. on Facebook. Yeah, but like, I never open Facebook. <laughs> I never actually use it. I, like, it just sits there unused. Almost. I, I I maybe twice a month I'll look at it. Maybe. Other than that, no. Now the messenger that with it, yeah, you know my 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 niece has the Facebook for kids or whatever, so she'll she'll message me on that, and it's got some parental right. filters. So, like, I'm not going to cancel Facebook, but I don't I don't trust it. The only thing I can think of, Tim, yeah, that would be non nefarious is that you post the amount of links that you post yes. when you join groups. Yep. Yeah. That that it's might all... have you registered as somebody who's like just. Spamming groups, not necessarily yeah, like based on your political beliefs. That that could be plausible that that's what they're doing. No, you're you're probably right because if I make like a Star Wars video, I will probably put it in about um at least thirty different groups. If it's like a different kind of video, I might do about five groups, and then it also explains why the other day I went to try to join some groups for uh, cowboy bebop and it would not let me join as my page and i'm like yeah. why why is this option gone away so i checked a bunch of different ones because here's another thing that's frustrating about facebook you don't know that you can't join as a page until you try like there's nothing that says pages can join this group you just have to try and then if the page selection thing pops up you know you can I went to like 30 different ones and none of them could. And I'm like, all right, they've something's different here. So they might have like banned me from doing that because of all the links that I post, but it works. Cause I get, I get, I can go into my analytics and I get a ton of traffic from those links that I post. Well, yeah. And it might be just as simple as you're posting links to YouTube and you're not, you're not putting videos on their platform. Oh, absolutely. Yep. It could be just it could be just that simple. Mm -hmm. Like, no, you know, we've had enough of you spamming our competitor. You know, cool cool your jets for a while there, Tim. You know. Mm -hmm. Anyway, see, kind of see, a see side topic that. there. But yeah, JK Rowling is uh again, you know, she's someone that I probably don't agree with stuff on ninety five percent of the time, maybe higher than ninety five percent, but uh this right here she's a lot more sane than a lot of the people that are traditionally on that side of the aisle. So. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to be real controversial here. And it's going to be like, I don't dislike her because of her politics. I dislike her because her books suck. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not a Harry Potter fan. What I'm about not a you, Harry Bill? Potter guy. I just couldn't get into it. I'm like, this was dumb. I don't know. I well, kind of liked it. Did you? Did you read them and watch the movies, or? Yeah, I did both. Okay. Huh. I definitely. Yeah, I'm just... I mean, as far as like books go, it, it doesn't really hold a candle to Tolkien. No. But I could definitely see does? like the, the inspiration there. It's not horrible either. Uh oh! I think we pissed someone off. <laughs> oh. Sorry, rhetorical thrill. But yeah, I've I think I bought the first one after the movie came out, the first movie. And uh I was gonna read it to my son when he was still a little guy. And uh we just couldn't get into it. I, I don't know, I'm not really a fantasy fan. I think I've talked about this before. I think Lord of the Rings is a big exception just because of the richness of the universe. But I've never really been able to get into any other fantasy. And Harry Potter kind of is, you know, fantasy more than anything. Now I did yeah. get into, like I did get into adult Harry Potter. 
I'm not sure if you guys have ever heard of the author Jim Butcher. I have not. Yeah, he writes these books um, about a guy named Harry, and he's like a wizard in Chicago, and he like solves crimes and stuff like that um and he gets hired you know he's like a a detective and uh gosh he's probably up to 20 books it's called the dresden files the sci-fi channel tried to adapt it and let me tell you guys what when you talk about unfaithful adaptations that one is in the running for being like the top award winner for being unfaithful adaptation creator because (laughs) it, it wasn't even close he had the same name, and and that's almost it. He didn't dress like he did because he dresses like the fucking Undertaker in the books. You know, he's got like a okay. trench coat and he's got like the hat and all that. Mm-hmm. Stuff. And yeah. So anyway, check it out. If you like Harry Potter, you might like that. And if you kind of like like horror type stuff, the stories were really good. I a buddy of mine actually, uh, it was shad from four corners podcast back in the day got me to read those um pretty good stuff yeah rhetorical thrill says her husband likes dresden files yeah i don't have a like i don't have a beef with people that like harry potter no no it's just like yeah like that's not one of those like man how could you like that shit like i get why people like it I, the only time I get kind of a little irritated is when people are like you know what, what house are you and are you a Slytherin I'm like I'm the fucking <laughs> person who doesn't fucking care. Go away. <laughs> like when, we're, when they get into that, everyone I'm off here. Like, we got to be careful. That's just a little, that's too much for me. Uh, but yeah, like if you like Harry Potter, go for it, man. I don't care. And and you shouldn't care whether or not I don't like it. That's the funny right. thing is, you know, Dale, Dale and I are kind of talking a little bit on this line before the stream started. This idea that so many people are so worried whether or not other people agree with their takes on media is just, it's such a bizarre thing to me. Right. Why, why is your enjoyment of something contingent on other people enjoying the same thing? Right. Like for instance, um, weird. I like Razor Fist and Razor Fist has said on several occasions that he hates anime didn't yeah. stop me from trying it out and enjoying it. Like I, I enjoy a lot of anime now. So it's not even like if someone if someone I, I like and respect, if they have their own shared view on something, or um if they have their own like they hate something, it's not gonna stop me from giving it a try and maybe enjoying it myself. Cause yeah. I don't I don't enjoy things because other people I know like the same things I do. Yeah, I total. I'm, I'm with you because I don't know anyone, and he said a few other things that, you know, um, that I don't agree with to the point where it's like he's he's not someone that I I hold up as this this unassailable icon of perfection. You know, there's some stuff right. that I don't agree with him on, but I like a lot of his takes, and I think he's entertaining to listen to, but. Yeah, when it comes to anime, like, again, I'll bring it up every time, like, Star Blazers, a.k.a. Space Battleship Yamato. Fantastic. It's from 1974. Um, uh, you know, uh, story arc and character moments. And what do you call the weird character again? You, uh, you said it like, in your video, Weeboo or something like that? Uh, there's like chibi moments. Chibi, like, thank you. Yes. Yeah, chibi stuff. It's when they act all cutesy and they they yeah. use a different style of drawing for the character. <laughs> there's a there's a drunk doctor on Star Blazers. Doesn't look like any of the other characters, and he's always drinking. But what's funny is, in in Space Battleship Yamato, he was drinking uh, uh sake, but in Star Blazers, he was drinking spring water. <laughs> because you know they cleaned it up a little bit for uh uh kids here in the United States in the 80s but yeah great show and then I'm like okay Robotech I think I have some Robotech DVDs still everyone has seen Maycross if you're from the 80s you've seen at least one episode but then nothing else I, I've never really been interested in any other anime but 
now that I've read the premise for Cowboy Bebop, it's like maybe that's something I'd enjoy. They're basically like this team, right, that goes around the solar system as mercenaries. That sounds kind of cool. And you got to check the dress of slutty. Like that sounds kind of fun. So yeah, I just can't uh, get into the style. It. I just can't get into the style. The way the characters Understood. emote or over emote. And, it, you know, like that's not some, like, you know, hey, if you like, if you like anime, that's fine. But I really, I, I, I need to address this. Because bull fucking shit right now. This is, this is so <laughs> absolutely not equivalent. Okay. Well, Jedi let's read what he Sith. said first. Let's read what he said. <laughs> he says, the fans that ask, what house are you in when it comes to Harry Potter are the same as the Star Wars fans that ask if you are a Jedi or a Sith. No. Asking Jedi or Sith are essentially, are you good or evil? Okay? Very binary, very one or the other, right? We're going to exclude the old gray Jedi. I know somebody brought it up in the chat. <laughs> there you go. Real Kim Shady. <laughs> right the the thing with with houses from what i understand in in like i've done them stupid little like quiz things and everything it's like your personality it's like a fucking horoscope you got all these houses <laughs> and, and you're in it de, and it defines your goddamn person like oh you're a scorpio so it, or, oh, you're a slytherin so you must be this 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 this, this. they're not the same it, they're just go take a quiz um, like, are you, you know, what house are you in for, for fucking Harry Potter? And it, it's all on personality traits. So, like, if you're in this house, you, you're this kind of person. If you're in this house, you're this kind of person with this kind of personality. And, you know, they judge you based on, like, oh, oh you're you're this and you're that. You're that. And I, I can't even name the houses right now. The only one I can think of is Stupid Slytherin. There's only but, four of them. <laughs> Dan, fuck you. He's great. Greg's, Greg is definitely a Slytherin. Okay, what are the four? Slytherin, Hufflepuff. There's a Hufflepuff fucker. Gryffindor. Okay. All right. And but am, am I right? It's like which house you're in when people ask you that. It's based on like your personality traits. Yeah, <laughs> that that's the one thing about Harry. Potter. It's like a horoscope, really is it not? It's a horoscope. It, there's a lot of there's a quirky oh, uh, there's a quirky fandom within Harry Potter that kind of ruins it. I always watched it because I kind of like the fantasy theme. Um, it's just, it's mindless fun. You know, I would put it on in the background when I'm doing other things. And it, Lord of the Rings is a little bit different because, you know, their character names and it's a lot of detail in the world that you have to remember. But in Harry Potter, it's just, well, here's this stupid character, this movie. And that's the focus of the movie. You know, it's not it's not as detailed. There's not really a lot of world building because it's just the stupid school. That's it. <laughs> I liked it though. I thought it was fun. That's fine. It's just minus a thousand points. That's all. <laughs> just, I'm just kidding. Like I really don't. I really don't care if people like it. I just like I just don't get the whole what house. If you don't like it, at. Greg, I swear to God. I'm gonna find you. I'm gonna. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna invent a stupid sport to play. Is that what you're gonna do? It, what, like Quidditch? Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, like talking Quidditch. about Quidditch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just found something. I I have to share this before we move on to something else, because this is freaking hilarious. Just the stuff that they come up with in real life. <laughs> and you know what she would say if she saw this in the bathroom right in the restroom how dare how you how dare you how dare you oh what a creepy little girl man she's not even a little girl what isn't she like 18 now or almost yeah, she's 18 now Jeez, and she looks 11 let's throw her out there Either that, she'd say blah 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 blah. That was her last thing. She's like, blah blah blah, blah 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 blah. blah. Like, what a compelling argument! Like, her whole shtick was the fact that, like, they used the fact that she was under eighteen, and then looked even younger because whatever yep. her condition is. That like, and oh, she's unassailable because she's a kid. You can't, you can't make fun of her. You can't go after her because she's a kid. It's like they just used. They use kids as human shields. 
Oh, you know David Hogg, too? He's basically the same thing, but an American. Oh, even worse. He's insane. Oh, Hogg, yeah. What a what a little shithead. Um, but yeah, Raging Rhino. I haven't seen that video yet. I think it's still in my uh my queue. Not my queue, but my uh notifications. I haven't swiped left, you know, because I was at work all day. But I'm gonna go ahead and throw Dale's link out there. Everyone watch it, and I'm sure you're subbed. If you're not, then get subbed. Because Dale's daily videos are well thought out and good to listen to. He he has a nice voice and he has nice thoughts. So definitely sub up to him. Well, I need to listen so to much. that though. Yeah, yeah I need thanks. to listen. And you talk thanks about the... stuff that no one else does. Yeah, I appreciate the plug. Uh, thanks, Rhino. Yeah, I made a, it was a video about Victoria, Australia. And uh, they're, they're getting women to work now in construction. So I don't know whether to think it's based or that they're trying to come after the jobs that, you know, guys jobs. Mm -hmm. Cause that's always like, that's something we talk about often whenever we're like equality in the workplace. Well, you just want to be a CEO, you know, you want to be someone's boss. that doesn't have to do that much. Mm -hmm. You don't, you never want to work on an oil rig. You know, you never want to work right. in a coal mine. You never want to work on a, on a crab boat, like in deadliest catch. You never want to be the <laughs> ice road truckers, you know. <laughs> right. You want to. You want to be the boss lady, you know. You're not the so one break, think... breaking the. You fixing the broken water main and sub zero temperatures. Well, you know. Yeah. There's, like I. I think it's a. Jordan Peterson. Like you know, there's there's always this clip you see on the YouTube where he's discussing. Um, uh, you know. Like who, which of the genders is really um, oppressed and everything? He rattles off a bunch of statistics. And it's like, yeah, which of the I genders the is really oppressed? You know, yeah. And and he goes through and, and one of his arguments is like, hey, guys do all the jobs that you get killed on. Yeah. Like literally, <laughs> like you don't see a whole lot of people. Like you know, you don't see a whole. Lot, you know, if women want to do it, that's fine. They. they Sure, go ahead. But I mean, it's yeah. just this idea that there's no difference between the genders is just kind of like that's clearly never been the case. And not like, I'm sorry, like, you, you want to be a roofer if you're a girl or a woman? Okay, go ahead and put that uh, package of shingles on your shoulders and go walk up that big ladder. Mm -hmm. so that's what yeah, the job and that's. Is. That's not to say that none and of them And by all can means, if it. you get too warm, take your shirt off. Yeah. <laughs> get that tan going. <laughs> but that's not to say that they that none of them could handle it, but it's probably like in excess of 99.5% that could not. Correct. Of course. There's, On a consistent basis. Yeah, there's an exception. But when you're talking about, you know, that, that curve, you know, is the biggest in they can't do that job area because they just they don't have the physical strength to do it they they can't physically perform that task and there's a lot of men that can't either but like on averages men can yep there's a difference between the genders and it's it's not subtle when it when it comes to that stuff you know you, you, you hear about that that swimmer and uh uh a transgender swimmer that like won one one of their her her uh races by 38 seconds setting all kinds of world records or school yes. records and shit like that this is fucking completely fucking dominating um <laughs> the the sport because she's he oh yeah, yeah it's it's one finally one of his, people like, are starting to speak up could you imagine like a 38 second difference in a swimming relay. That's incredible. Like you watch something like the Olympics and it's decided by fractions of a second between like first and fifth. You fucking yeah. won by 38 fucking seconds. That's an eternity. Yeah. That's not even close. That's just embarrassing. I could probably do a lap 
um, in 38 seconds without any yeah, training. Like, yeah, we're talking like I didn't see like a video out of it. That had to be like more than one leg. Yeah, I mean, that, you know, wow. That's like, you know, you, you're in the showers, you're out of the showers and getting dressed and the other people are finishing the race. Yeah. Kind of like ridiculous level of difference, but, you know. Dungeon Master Blaster, thanks for being here. And yes, Tuesday night is now the night for the show. I want to back up here to this Comment from Rhetorical Thrill. She reminds me of a weird friend I had as a kid whose mom was an old hippie. She's talking about Greta again. Mm -hmm. Their house always reeked of patchouli and they made their own fruit roll-ups and shit. Let me tell you something. <laughs> when you pass someone in a store wearing patchouli, it takes like three seconds, but then it will hit you like after they passed you and you it makes you want to throw up. It It's like dirt and um, the cheapest perfume mixed together that's what i think of when yeah. i think of nasty ass patchouli oh i hate that smell like, it's inducing like a gag reflex just thinking about it yeah why and let's rub <gasps> ourselves in this you know let's roll in it oh so you don't have to shower yeah and she has a good point here the the ones that can do the roofing aren't the ones you want to see topless <laughs> That that is probably <laughs> that is probably accurate. Although you yeah. know, there's some there's some you know some beefy muscular chicks out there. I I still wouldn't mind seeing naked. <laughs> so let's let's bring this up really quick. This is something that you guys sent me in the middle of the day. You've got this little oh, flick yes. war going on between Elon Musk, aka Person of the Year. And yes, Times person of Poca, the year, right? Pocahontas, not Pocahontas, yeah. ass Pocahontas. So she says, uh, she posts the Boston Globe story on him being Times person of the year. Let's okay. change the rigged tax code so the person of the year will actually pay taxes and stop freeloading off everyone else. And then, um, here he comes. Quote, tweet, stop projecting. Elizabeth Warren is a fraud. Her lies about being Native American um, <laughs> disqualifies Senator Elizabeth Warren repeatedly and deliberately sought to benefit her in her personal academic and employment life by posing as a Native American. So he did that after she had done this. And then he replies to hers, though. <laughs> you remind me of when I was a kid and my friend's oh, angry mom would just randomly yell at everyone for no reason. <laughs> Please don't call <laughs> the manager on me, Senator Karen hands together and pleading <laughs> this guy, man. I saw that tweet and I was, I just laughed my ass off. The, the <laughs> idea that he doesn't pay taxes or he doesn't pay his fair share. Like I think his first response was actually um well he did the thing let me see if i can find it stop projecting yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he said something you'd be like you obviously aren't paying attention or something to that effect like i'm gonna pay more taxes this year than than anybody ever has <laughs> it, it was something something to that effect it was it's like oh. because he sold his stock and he's paying like fifty three percent on billions and billions of th like he's right. paying billions of dollars in tax and this idea of calling him a freeloader because he didn't pay income taxes well okay so are you going to be running with Mitt Romney because fifty percent of the country doesn't pay income taxes are they freeloaders yep. Elizabeth yep. Are they free These are all insiders and, too, so they're mm -hmm. they're ones to talk, right? Like they've earned their right, money. Yeah. yeah, they they go into office, right, in D.C. You know, probably making eighty to a hundred thousand a year, and then they become multimillionaires when they come out. How the fuck does that work? 
Yeah, it's it's a it's amazing, and yeah, they can actually legally inside trade. Um, mm-hmm. That that they just are able to do that. What what's really like Elon's been on a roll lately, and, and I, I'm finding it fantastic. Like I I admire the man for what he's doing, and and what he's building. Like I don't, and you would think that he'd be tailor made for like the left to adore because he's like, yeah, we can you know you know we can convert everything to solar and my batteries and. And you know we could solve the whole the world's energy thing. Yeah, we can do that. Yeah. <laughs> and you know you you'd think and initially he was right, but as he's as he's gone further along in his business and he's encountering all these roadblocks and all these other things, he's he's starting to change his tune a little bit. And he, I'd say he definitely has changed his tune. He's damn near sounding Randian in in some cases. Holy oh shit. Um, but one of the one of the things, like, like if, if you're tuned into politics, I won't get too much into politics, but if you're tuned in, that's awesome. <laughs> uh, part of part of one of the, the the tax credits in the Build Back Better bill um, is specifically carved out to exclude um, Teslas. It's a four thousand dollar vehicle tax credit, which, me personally, I don't think any vehicle should have any tax credit whatsoever. Mm-hmm. Um, buy the vehicle that's appropriate for you, and like, I don't think any vehicle should qualify for a tax credit. Like, if you want to buy an electric vehicle, then buy one. My friends got my friends got a Tesla, by the way, and I, I rode with them in it. That fucking thing puts you back in your seat. It has so much get up and go. Like, I I thought the car was awesome. Because it's an electric engine and it has no delay. It's like hit the gas pedal and poof, you are off. That's what I like. Heard, it man. actually like presses you back in the seat. Like that's how much zip it's got. Like if I had one, I'd get fucking speeding tickets every goddamn day. But anyway, the specific tax card, four thousand dollars of it, is specific to EV electric vehicles that are produced or or fine. It's final assembly processes in the United States, which is fine. Tesla would qualify for that, but also union made. So you only get the tax credit if you buy a, you can't buy a good Tesla. You have to buy a shitty um, Volt. Oh, I'm Chevy. Those are because that one's made by union labor. So they, then you can qualify for the $4,000 tax credit, but not his cars. His cars are excluded because he's uh, his, his operations are non-union. And by the way, he's not the only one that has a problem with this because, like, that would also exclude all Toyota vehicles as well. Yeah. Right? Even the ones that are made in America, which, by the way, or the final assembly is in America. Most Toyotas that are sold in America are made in the American South. Yeah, you know um, what I do for a living. I yeah, I I know yeah. that. Um, and the people in the audience should know that, but yeah, well, hopefully they do. They do now. FYI, today in my hometown of Stockton, California, there is a Tesla plant, and there was a murder in the parking lot today. <laughs> That's how freaking scandalous that city is. Um, I don't know if you follow like certain Facebook pages. There's just crazy shit happening every fucking hour, and it's that way in every city. But it's it's so bad there per capita. Just the different kinds of shit, kidnappings and missing children and murders and just robberies at, in broad daylight and shit like that. So crazy. No, I I haven't I haven't lived in Stockton in 23 years. So I moved 23 years ago to secure undisclosed location in any town USA. So, but yeah, it's, I went back in 2000 and it had gotten worse um, over the couple of years I had been gone. I haven't been back since, even though I have family there. So, and this wasn't even like the first time he's done this to a Senator. Uh, This, this goes back to, um, Wyden, the, Ron Wyden, I think, the, the Oregon senator, 
And then he did this to Bernie Sanders, too. I think some people might forget, but <laughs> he, he's like, I forgot you were alive. Bernie yeah, Sanders. Yeah, 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 I remember that. <laughs> and then the, and of course, the, PP, the PP thing. Yeah, with, with the Wyden <laughs> senator. Um, he's like, your, your profile picture makes it look like you just came. <laughs> and then and Ber- bernie do you want me to sell more stock there was that one too yeah yeah, yeah i think that yeah. was the the same thing well this idea is like you know that these ceos or, or these these company founders who own a substantial portion of the companies they founded <laughs> um Actually, I don't think he, he didn't found Tesla. I think he, he got into it and, you know, obviously he's been, he's been awarded an enormous amount of shares um, through his management of the company. That's, that's how, that's his compensation has been basically rewarded shares. And you, you don't pay the tax on things just because they go up in value. You have to, you don't pay the tax until you actually sell the thing of value. Uh, just the same as like a house, right? Just because your house goes up fifty thousand dollars in value doesn't mean you have fifty thousand dollars of income. It's not like you have fifty thousand dollars laying around because your house, you're living in it. You you have to liquidate it in order to realize that gain, and and that is, you know, that's the new thing that they want to go after um, is these unrealized gains from these billionaires, but. You know, essentially, which would force them to sell out of their own companies. They they would lose control over their own companies if the stock went up, because they'd be forced to sell the stock in order to pay the tax. So if you put in place a wealth tax, whatever percent it is, how would he pay the tax? Well, he'd have to sell shares. Yeah. And and you'd you'd be forcing you'd be forcing people to to lose control of their own companies. Um, to pay an unrealized gain. And, and and part of the counter argument is like, well, they can borrow against it. It's like, yes, but then they're all, okay, they can. But how, but they're still, it's a loan. So they have to pay it back. And when they withdraw money or sell shares or earn regular income to pay the said loan back, they have paid taxes on it. Yep. That's 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 how it works. But the real the real real scam of all of all of it is is people like Warren know damn well that if you took a hundred percent of Elon's money, a hundred percent of the 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 Walton heirs money, the Koch brothers money, Soros's money, you took uh, who who am I missing? Um uh uh uh, what's his name from, from Warren Amazon. Buffett? Be- Bezos' money, Warren Buffett's money. If you took 100% of it all at its current evaluation price, which you can't possibly do because if they were to start mass selling, of course, the value would go down. But let's say you could. It still wouldn't fund all the things that she's saying it would fund Mm-mm. because people like her are out there promising the world to all the voters out there saying, like, look, we can have all these wonderful things. If only these people just paid more. See a lady tour. And the truth is, and they know it, is that it's mathematically impossible. You take all the billionaires' money, 100% of it, doesn't even fund the, fund the government for a year. Right. You wouldn't get one year of no taxes. Yep. We've got Alora in the chat. Thanks for being there. And then Alaric Harrison says, there are many areas in the U.S. that resemble a failed country, and it's not a secret. It's becoming known around the world that U.S. is unraveling like a company under bad management. Thanks for being here at the stream, Alaric, and I totally agree with you. Um, And here's the thing about taxes. Here's the thing about taxes. Uh, shit libs to use one of Dale's terms they see they see paying taxes as this virtue as this it's the pinnacle of virtue I remember Biden as vice president 
early on in the uh, oh yeah, it's a patriotic first Obama duty. term, huh? Yeah, it's a patriotic duty. Yeah, he said that he's like, you got to get in there, you got to get patriotic and pay them taxes, man. It's like, why? It's mine. How is that? How is that patriotic? Let's just privatize everything and you know let the private industry make sure that we get the services we need. But then you get the Marauds people and whoever else, you know, um, education. Some people think there's this website I found like a couple of weeks ago. They think that privatizing education is like an attack. It's like just the thought of not having like public education where the government dictates what's taught to them is like this attack on their humanity. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's, That's why the universally the that works. Well, I mean that in the unions is they they universally that party universally opposes vouchers. Yeah, which fund private? It allows kids of low means, the, the people that they're supposedly for, right? They're for the poor people, right? It it specifically denies them the ability to get an education outside of the public public school system. Yeah. And they're they're opposed to it. Exactly. Melissa Lord says, here's the thing about taxes. They are theft, period. Yeah, if something's mine and you take it away from me and I don't want you to, then it's theft. That's that's my take. Well, it's always a game because you know they always they'll, they'll use things like fair share, right? Ask okay, what's the fair share? Mm-hmm. What's name the percentage? Yep. And they won't generally name the percentage. At best, they'll name the percentage in their current bill. But here's the deal: like Build Back Better, right? It's you, it's a ten year it's a ten year lease on a car that'll only run three years. There's right. ten years worth of tax income to pay for three years or less of these programs. So what happens on year four? Are they going to cancel the program? All these programs are saying that it's going to no. save America and make your life so so great. Are they going to cancel the programs? Mm-mm. No. So and 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 you know, P- Pisaki was asked about this. She's like, well, you know, the president would would of course would want these these programs to continue, uh, but he'd want them paid for. Well, okay, but you've said that this percent when you pass this bill is the, their fair share. Now it obviously has to be more because you need 10 years of the tax revenue to pay for just three years of the program. So again, year four, if you want to continue the program, your choice is either deficit spend or raise taxes again. And then this time, what's the new fair share? Yeah. And that just proves that here's the thing. You're asking them a a, a logical question and they hadn't even thought that. Yeah, exactly. They haven't thought that far ahead. Uh, Fair share is just this concept in their head that means we're going to take money away from someone that we think has too much money. Yeah. Yeah. Um, You want to talk about fair share? Okay, name the number. And then it can't go over that. Right. Yeah, it's it's all a it's a fucking religion, man. Like well, taking away the- taking away from those who have and given to those who have not, so they can uh, destroy the wealth that was created by someone else. And literally, just buy votes. <laughs> I mean, that, I mean, it's just fundamentally that's that's what it comes down to, right? Free yep. daycare, vote for me. Free daycare, Dale's gonna pay for it. Vote for me. Did you guys, uh, on another topic, did you guys see my short the other day on on Nell Scavell? I think so. I don't... Refresh my memory. It's the cunt that blamed the voters of Kentucky, the legal voters of Kentucky, for oh, being yeah. hit by a tornado. Yeah, because they did yeah, yeah. They, they vote for climate change bills or something right here it is right here bounding into comics 
she says, and this person, she has written for a lot of different shows. If you look at her IMDb, like a lot of different shows, but for whatever reason, bounding chose to, um, associate her with that horrible Muppets, um, office style show from a few years back. I think it was like three years ago, four years ago. She says in her tweet here, after, again, everyone heard about this, Kentucky and four other states were hit by the same tornado, or three other states. It was four states, same tornado, unheard of for a tornado to travel that far. Um, And a lot of people lost their homes and everything else. So she gets on there and says, sorry, Kentucky, maybe if your two senators hadn't spent decades blocking legislation to reduce climate change, you wouldn't be suffering from climate disasters. If it's any consolation, McConnell and Rand have effed over all of us too. And then she followed up with tie FEMA aid to U.S. senators from that state's vote to tax carbon, stop fracking, support solar, and address climate change. No federal cleanup funds for people who have helped create the disaster. And then later, my tweet has been twisted into something it is not. My hate is directed toward the senators from Kentucky who have endangered all our lives with their reckless denial of science and toadying to corporate interests. Prayers for the fam or the people of Kentucky who are suffering along with so many others. Also, not buying at anyone lecturing, not buying at, I don't know what she was trying to say there, anyone lecturing me on how innocent people died but don't support gun control. I support both gun control and climate change legislation. Okay, whatever. So this this is just stupid. The fact that she thinks that if two senators had uh, voted a certain way for more climate change legislation that a tornado actually could have been prevented. That tornadoes didn't exist, let's say, before uh, the 1970s or something like that, 1960s. Right. The fact yeah, that... The, the historical record would, would very much indicate the, the opposite, but okay. Yeah, and this, again, that tornado started in northeast arkansas i think it went through southern uh, maybe illinois it went through uh shit uh might have been southern indiana before it finally got to kentucky so it didn't even start in kentucky so she's saying that if those those two particular senators had voted a certain way that they wouldn't have had their property destroyed well, um, presumably, and then, if, along with all the other senators who voted against it, if they all just supported climate exactly, change. Exactly, you know. exactly. Well, and then, just, just, and then, but think about this. If we want to talk about senators and other members of Congress, like I said in my short, what about all the ones, there are 53, I believe, congressmen in California. They got to get to Washington, right? So guess what? They fly. 53 of them. They've done more than McConnell and Rand could ever do in their life to affect climate. <laughs> Period. Yep. Not just the current ones, but as long as McConnell and Rand have been around. Think about that for a minute. It's it's astronomical how much more damage they've done. And not by well, the yeah, way that you vote. Just, I mean, the entire argument that... that, that... Any time that a, a storm occurs, that it must be related to climate change, because, like, I mean, again, we know by the historical record that you know there's been unseasonably warm temperatures in the United States in the middle of winter on occasion. Um, it happens, and, and if you actually look at you know, you, you go and Google some of the the information on like you know most deadly months for tornadoes. Um, December was never the bottom month. Right. Why is that? Well, yep. because they've always happened. This idea that that had they voted for climate change, one, that presumes that climate change would actually have an effect and, and mitigate uh, the temperature to the point where tornadoes wouldn't happen, which obviously is, is not the case. 
um, like it, it, like even even if passed as is the proposals, there's I don't think there's any evidence to suggest that it would have actually had an effect because you know on a on a on a planetary scale, what we've reduced is being eaten up by developing nations. So yeah. as 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 some of these poor nations become industrialized um, and modernized, yeah, like China, um, they're going to continue to to exude, uh, you know, to exert a, a, a larger and larger, larger carbon footprint that will dwarf any of the gains that we would, you know, promise to make here. So Dell's got to go. Oh yeah, I'm gonna head on out here, guys. Uh, just yeah, yeah. want to say thanks for uh, let me on yet another awesome stream. Hopefully Tuesday's working out here. Uh, you know, Tim unfortunately had your little technical yeah, issues sorry earlier. About that. To you guys and to everyone, you know, I still blame Microsoft, but again, <laughs> it, it's uh, it's my equipment, and uh, I apologize to all you guys. But yeah, I I it's. Tuesday's a lot better for me because I feel less stressed out because Mondays kind of suck for everyone. Um, mm -hmm. I just think it'll be a better night. But yeah, Dale, thanks for being here. Everyone sub to Dale. He's on the road to 5,000 subscribers. Well earned. So tell friends and, and get him there for sure. But yeah, have a good night. And are you going to stream tomorrow night? Yeah, I'm going to try to stream tomorrow night. I didn't last week because last week I had a, uh, a lot of family shit going on. Yeah. <laughs> it's very hectic, but yeah, I appreciate being on here. Um, love being, uh, every time I get to stream with you guys, it's a lot of fun because we have sophisticated conversations. It's not just uh, rinse and repeat. Let's just talk about the same thing everyone else is. You know, we, we have our own, our own thoughts and opinions. We're willing to think outside the box. So yes. yeah, I just want to say hail to the chat before I go. And, uh, Greg, it was fun talking to you for about a half hour before Tim showed up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, you know, it, it feels like I, you know, started at normal time for, you know, because we, we kind of, we yeah, kind of All right. <laughs> you guys, uh, hell to the all chat. Right. See you guys next week. See you, man. Right. Have a good one. Good night, sir. But yeah, this, and here's the thing. She, what she's saying here is, here's what she's really doing in this first tweet. Just, just read it. Sorry, Kentucky. Yeah, like she's really, it, it's one of those condescending, sorry, you know, you know, like you're talking to a kid when they've yeah, done yeah. something wrong. <clears throat> she's insulting them for voting the way that they voted. Because they're not smart enough to vote the way that they should have voted that would have prevented the tornado. It, does she think anyone's actually going to believe that? That if they had voted for some other shitheads for uh because other shitheads is appropriate with these two guys if they had voted for someone else they their house wouldn't have been destroyed by a tornado because that tornado never would have happened i mean are you kidding me right well there there are a lot of people that that do believe it or will defend her anyway because i know that that shortly after this happened they, they tried to pivot the argument to the the fact that um, Rand Paul, uh, via um, an objection, prevented uh, the Hurricane Sandy relief bill from going through on a voice vote. And they're trying to imply, like, well, you know, Rand Paul wasn't, you know, he he didn't he didn't vote in favor of of you know helping New Jersey and New York when 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 their disaster relief bill comes. So you know. It, you know, that makes him a bad guy, and you know why should why should the, the taxpayers of the country give money to Kentucky because Kentucky wouldn't give money to them? And it's like, well, one, okay, and this is the political game as as it gets played. They try to ram it through on a voice vote. He objected, so what that means is they can't they can't ram it through on a voice vote. So they can do a, they could do just a regular vote then, mm -hmm. and and there's procedures in the Senate to hold up things. If there's not unanimous consent, and what it was is, you know, they they played this game. So you call the bill a Hurricane Sandy relief bill, and then you throw in a bunch of shit like re-roofing the 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 Smithsonian, right, and and a whole bunch of other things. And a good chunk of it was um, 
mitigation spending, not actual disaster relief spending. So this is this is spending that was designed supposedly to to uh, on you know Army Corps of Engineers projects to make these areas that were affected more resilient next time around, which you could definitely argue might be worthwhile money. I mean, one of the things that um, we can do, you know, to confront climate change as it occurs is to mitigate the damages of it, you know, fortify um, some of our shorelines and, 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 you know, build dunes and, and, and water breaks and, and things like that to prevent this. Oh, this and the- Hey, and according to Farrakhan, don't allow um, the government to plant bombs on the levees that allow New Orleans to be flooded. Let's also <laughs> right, right, yeah. So you know, we can we can we can send in the bomb squad to get rid of those. Yes, um, but there's there's a lot of things we can do in, in for the coastal communities to to mitigate the damage from the storm surge, and that's. In the northeast, with with that hurricane, that was the bulk of the damage. It wasn't the the wind itself or anything like that? It was the storm surge, the waves coming off the ocean. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it, it washed out certain communities because it was such a big. You know, it was it was wind driven waves, but it was it was that was the cause of it. And there are mitigation things that you can do. And definitely could argue that, you know, some of that money needs to be spent. We spend money on those kind of things all the time, all over, all over the country uh, on various works projects. We do it for rivers. We do it, we do it for, you know, ocean communities. We, it's something the government has always done, but to, to, to tack that into a, a relief bill, and then to say like, hey, look, I don't agree with this spending here, and I don't agree with this spending here. Um, so I'm not voting with it because it's got it's got this money here, and it'd be like, well, you're against, you know, you're against hurricane relief packages for for poor people who lost their houses. It's like, no, yeah, it's a ploy. I mean, it, it it it's just a game, and I and I believe at the time, Rand Paul specifically said like, look, all I want to do is offset the, the like we're gonna if we're gonna spend seven billion here. I want to cut seven billion from foreign aid. Mm-hmm. Let's just offset it. Let's 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 take the money from something else and spend it here because this is the higher priority. And yeah, you, you got my vote. But to just pass it without any kind of uh, plan to 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 pay for it, uh, it like he's he's made principle he's made those kind of principled votes his entire political career. Um, that's why he gets the ire of some people in his own. Um, in his own caucus, in his own party, is because he will take those principled votes. Uh, but to say that, like, he was against helping people who were hurt by the storm, Hurricane Sandy, uh, that's just, I, I mean, I guess that's one way you can spin it, but it's pretty disingenuous. It's not honest. Uh, but that's, that's politics. So, yeah, you know, I, I guess because Rand Paul voted a particular way on you know the Hurricane Sandy relief package, then all these people in all these different states that got hit because it wasn't just Kentucky. Like I said, it was it was four states that one tornado period, and that's yeah. Uh, but the, I mean, there was one in uh, what in Illinois that that hit that Amazon yeah distribution center or whatever. You know that there was some casualties there as well. Like yeah no we're gonna hold up that we're gonna we're, we're you're gonna get nothing because we don't like what the way your senator voted on this one particular package back what ten years ago unless Sandy was that Obama's first term yeah I think it was because it was it had to be first term because I know people were really irritated about um, about Chris Christie's like hugging up to Ho- Obama. Prior to yeah. the 2012 election. So it, yeah, it definitely happened about the first term. So we're talking 10, 10 years ago. Um, but yeah, it's just, that's not, that's not an honest argument, but it's the way politics are played, especially when you have these big, massive emergency bills. It's almost always the emergency bills that are just the worst as far as like what they allocate money to and how they're spending it because you know, you're not going to be the one that votes against re- re- uh, tornado relief package for for Kentucky, are you? Do you hate people in Kentucky? Like, you know, Matt, you can't vote against that. Matt Mixon's in the chat. 
what's going on, man? <laughs> and he facetiously yeah. <laughs> says, what does it matter? We will all be dead in 10 years from irreversible climate change. Here's the That's thing. Right. I literally remember at my middle school back home in California, I remember watching these videos. Um, and Al Gore was the one who was uh, shown in these videos. This is like in 1988, guys. About the greenhouse effect and the and the ozone layer and all of it's going to combine, and it was by the end of the century, uh, you know, you would have the uh, man-made global warming would bring us to the brink and all this shit. Well, you know, then they reset, and then you had the day after tomorrow and all that bullshit. It's the it's the day that never comes, guys. It's the day that never comes. Yeah, we have to act now. Act now. Pass bills. You know what always comes from like act now emergency measures is just bad it's bad policy. Mm-hmm. Like all, all the time. And that's why, you know, the, the smart states right now, and and you know, getting a little political, but um the best thing that you could be adamant about in your local and, and state elections is the removal of these emergency powers that governors were granted and governors mm-hmm. abused uh, through the pandemic um, that were never designed for this particular kind of emergency, right? There was never, there was never a point where like action needed to be taken right now. And there's just no way we can get our, our, our representatives and senators back to make a, take a vote on it. So the, the governor needs to be able to do that because it, it's gonna, like, it's an emergency. It, it, like, the decision has to be made right now, this second. And if we don't make the change or we don't make the decision right now, this second, then you know, people are gonna die or whatever. That, that's the whole purpose of these emergency things that are born from a time where um, you, you couldn't teleconference, you couldn't Zoom, you couldn't vote, you know, while not being there all these other things, remove these emergency powers or make them very, very narrow and then force a vote on it. And you're like, hey, you know, your state wants to do a mask mandate, vote on it. Yeah. You know, you want to do a mask mandate, California? That shouldn't be the governor's just, the governor should never be given, and any governor, no, no matter what party, should be given the ability to put these things in place without the representative of the people your senators, your congressmen, and I'm talking state level, but also yeah. federal, that they're supposed to be your voice in government, and they're getting, you know, they've they've abdicated that power to to these governors through these god awful uh, emergency powers acts, and you know, Ryan was in the chat, like you know, Star Wars was very prophetic. <laughs> and you know, I'm not saying like necessarily like oh, you know, Newsom is Chancellor Palpatine, but like the, the message in those movies and it, it, Star Wars really wasn't prophetic. It's something that's happened throughout the course of human history in, yep. in various forms of government, um, where emergencies are used um, to seize control and, and seize power. And, uh, it, it's not something that Star Wars invented. But like we're we're getting another like really good look at it in in modern times, so if you want to pay attention, like you know when when your local when your local representative or your your state representative comes and says like I want your vote, tell them, take away the government's emergency powers and you got it. Yeah, I'll vote for, I'll vote for you, but repeal that repeal the governor's authority to take. Those emergency actions, because there's not a scenario in modern times where you guys can't get back to the Capitol or take some sort of voice or or Zoom type of vote to enact emergency procedures in an actual emergency. Right. For things like a pandemic, because you notice like they put the mask mandate in effect in, in California and, and not to get too cold, but we'll just it's not i'm not talking about the efficacy or anything about the mask just the policy of putting the mask mandates in place right they announced it yesterday to take effect tomorrow or 
a day from tomorrow, like three days later, two days later? Well, why'd you need the emergency power to enact something that's going to take effect in three days? Mm -hmm. Like, oh, on starting on the 15th, we're going to do this. And we've seen this happen throughout the pandemic where they, when they put these things into place, be like, oh, just with the travel ban from South Africa, it, it'll, it'll be in place on Monday. Well, wait a minute. If it's so important that we got to put a travel ban in place, then why aren't we doing it today? Why right. are we waiting through the weekend? What, what about all those people that are going to travel now even more so because they're going to rush to get on planes to get back here if, if they're from here or, or to get here if they intend to be here? They're going to catch it. They're going to be clamoring for a flight to get in. What about all those people that, that flew over the weekend in the United States? Like if it's, if it's good policy that we're going to ban travel from these countries uh, because of Omicron, then how is it good policy to wait three days or two over the weekend? Mm -hmm. it's just, there's, there's no logical ex justification for it. Stop it now. If it's, if it's an emergency and it has to be done, why are you waiting the weekend? If yeah. it's an emergency and it has to be done, why are you waiting three days? Yep. That's a good point. Because it's not an emergency. Trey and Rhino were both bringing up Y2K, and it's hilarious because yeah. I was on America Online at the time, and I remember <laughs> that night in uh, 1999. Like, I remember all these people like making these goodbye posts and all this stuff. And and guess what happened when the clock ticked midnight? And uh, I yeah. guess it would have been over there in in Australia or in, in that region, right where it first became the year 2000 and nothing happened. No, and it was a great time to be a programmer because you could really command your wage because there's like, mm -hmm. you have to update these programs. Mm -hmm. So they used the four digit year or you put in some like little check where it would, if the year was under 50, it would presume it was, you know, 2050, it was over 50, then it would assume it's 19 something. Um, yeah, that, that was much ado and nothing. And then it, beca it became almost like a meme where everybody was just kind of like, it was the story, just like it, like the like the big lotto jackpot becomes the story. Everybody talks about, oh, what would you do if you won the big jackpot? And this is Y two K was kind of like that. I, me personally, I, I I can remember it. I was never even remotely concerned about it. No, it's it was stupid. Like. To me, it didn't make any sense because, again, you know, I, I was programming in the 80s in junior right, high. Me too. And it didn't make any sense. Okay, so we go from 99 nine to zero, 00. How is that going to affect anything? You know, I think, I think, a, I think a stock market computer somewhere in the Middle East went down, and that was like the only thing in the world. Yeah. The, the the only thing was is like so programmers would programs would assume that a two digit year automatically had one nine in front of it. Mm -hmm. So if it rolled over to zero zero, it would then assume that it was nineteen hundred, not two thousand. That was the whole that was the whole scare. Yeah, but so what? <laughs> what what logic in the code would be going, uh oh, it's nineteen hundred, I'm gonna do something weird, you know? Um, any kind of any any kind of program that that does any kind of date comparison. So if you compare, so you compare two days prior, the computer would actually think it's ninety nine years and three hundred and sixty three days apart, not two days. So any, anything that 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 requires uh, any sort of time calculation, it would have issue. And yeah, and a yeah, lot yeah. of it in a, in a lot of network in a lot of network stuff initially like you know how 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 that worked was based on you know like a, a ping would be like how many how many seconds transpired since January first nineteen seventy mm -hmm. that would be the number and then you'd wait to get the number back and you'd calculate the difference well yeah I mean Everyone's... like I, I think it was a legit programming issue like. Like this idea that it was like entire critical infrastructures were going to crash due to it. Like I think that you know that was always overblown. But that's the mm -hmm. news. They they want like the, the, the same again pandemic. Like 
panic sells. Yeah, I saw like some memes today, like a political cartoon of a kid with a stick, you know, like do something. And the kid was the media, and then the animal was like Omicron. It's like they they want something to happen, you know. Oh yeah, yeah, I saw that meme too. Like they're trying to poke, yeah. it, with, poke, it, poke it with the stick, but like do something. Everyone's talking about Y2J, of course, Chris Jericho, because he about five months before Y2K, he came up with that gimmick when he entered WWF, and uh, his react, the crowd reaction to his appearance. There aren't many reactions like first reactions in wrestling history like that one because. If you've never seen that before, Greg, I could show you after the stream. We can't show it on the stream, but yeah, his the music started and they still don't know who it is. And then the uh, Titan Tron video came up and his name flashed in the crowd. It took them a second to read it, you know, and then it was like this collective breath. And it was like, yeah, because there was the rumor, you know, he's going to come. And then it's like, yay. It's someone else for all these guys to interact with, you know, because it kind of got stale with the same old guys for a couple of years. So anyway, everyone's talking about Y2G in the chat. So I mm. thought I'd bring that up. Um, yeah, that was over my head. Uh. Alaric Harrison says, I've studied the science on global warming and the majority of its benefits, a majority of it benefits the planet, a warming planet. Increase, increases plant production, a cooling planet reduces plant production without carbon dioxide. Earth is all ice. Yeah, I mean, that's that's always the thing. Like, in fact, there's that TNG episode where they purposefully release CO2. Remember that? Yeah. Well, and I mean, kind of and backfires. That's, well, that's one of the whole, like, the whole Mars thing, right? Is to colonize Mars, one of the plans is to, like, because the polar ice caps in Mars isn't water. It's frozen carbon dioxide. It's dry ice. Yep. Mm -hmm. And so one of the ways to warm the planet is, is to find a way to melt those ice caps, get that CO2 in the atmosphere so you can get some greenhouse effect going. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, that's one of the, you know, ideas or plans or, or whatever to, to colonize Mars. So yeah, yeah, like CO2 C, CO2 certainly plays a plays a role. It is a trace gas. I mean, you know, people, the, w the way people talk about it, you'd think that CO2 is like the most dominant gas in the atmosphere. It's like ah, yeah, no, no, it's not. It's actually way, way down the list. Yeah, these books right here, that's there's a trilogy, Red, Green, and Blue Mars, and that's it's like a pretty realistic telling of how do we uh, terraform Mars. These are old mm -hmm. books. They're from the 80s. So if you've never heard of those, uh, definitely check them out. Yeah, never n never have heard of them. But um, the, the idea is like, back to what, what is it? Alar Alaric? Um, Alaric, yeah. Yeah, like, there, there are there are people out there who said just that. It'd be like, uh, wait, a warmer planet is bad. Why? But you notice, you notice like a lot of the, these alarmists are, are the ones that are buying beachfront property. That strike is a little bit. Odd. Is Greg roboting for anyone else, or is it me? Not robotic right. to myself, but I don't know. <laughs> Chat. Yeah, you're still roboting. Do I sound okay to you? Yeah, you don't find me. Okay. Chat. Yeah, uh, Dan says you're. Dan Beep. says you're you're roboting. Beep. Am I all right now? Yeah, it's getting better. I don't know what the hell could be causing that. But. Here's the thing, you know. I'm just like, sitting here looking at my monitor. <laughs> I've told this story before, too. Like, in 1987, you know, I'm sitting there in my living room on the old-style computer desk on my 386, and I'm thinking, man, just think about 20 years from now, 
like how fast computers are going to be and it's so awesome yeah. now we're like more than 30 and the faster we make computers the more we find ways to slow them down because we want them running more processes and stuff like that yeah we want well i mean it, it's just we we our expectations grow to 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 meet the the new potential yeah. like all right we got more we got we have more hard drive space hard drive space is cheap all right, let's find a way to fill it up. This this regular res- resolution 1080 porn is not good enough. We need 4K porn. Oh, dude, I remember watching in 99, and it would take like a freaking three hours to download a 20-second <laughs> yeah. clip, and it's like that wasn't even a good one. <laughs> you yeah. know, there was no players, you know, like there are now <laughs> and stuff. Right. That was like yeah. that was the hard times, 56K. Um, you know, and that that's always the issue with like with freeways too, and like in these major cities, is like every time you make the freeways bigger, they just more people use them. Yeah, and turd turd eaters will drive in the leftmost lane like ten miles under the speed limit. It doesn't matter which lane is the leftmost lane; that's the one they're going to drive that way in. Uh, Small time republic. When it comes, to, republic, f- when it when comes, it comes to, to what? F- when it comes to freeway, the thing that needs to be enforced. At the strictest level, well, one, there's there's two things that I want to see. I want to see see a rule is you block a freeway, I get to run you over, and then you have to yeah. pay my car damages. Your state has <laughs> to pay my car damages. So absolute 100% freedom of any liability for hitting people who are intentionally blocking traffic. So that would be my number one rule. Uh, number two is failing to achieve highway speeds at the top by the time you hit the top of a ramp Every morning I deal with that. Automatic revocation of your driver's license. You lose. Get off. I wish I I saw this on Jetsons one time for a parking space, but I wish I had this disintegration ray. Oh yeah. That not only disintegrates the person in front of me that's driving slow, it would also erase them from existence to where no one ever knew they existed. That's what I want installed on my car when someone's going, <laughs> when someone's going uh like 65 in a in a 70 or a 75 like and i want to go 85 or 90 like move the hell out of my way i just think you like jerk. when you look at m- more often than not what what causes stop and go congestions on freeway and freeway accidents is people not matching the speed of traffic when merging onto the freeway Mm-hmm. Like and you, you just sit. You can just sit there and watch it. And you see it. Somebody, somebody meanders. They, they think the on ramp is a cruising lane, and they just kind of merge in, merge into traffic, and then it causes this cascade of brake lights behind. And then it just, it, it just, it's it's an effect that just keeps going and going. And but going. guess what? Guess what? Mm. If I'm in the rightmost lane and a ramp's coming up, I do not yield. And I get the horn. Well, it, it depends on me. Like, like if it's a t- like if I think it's going to be a tough one, I'll like. I, I won't. Nece- I may not necessarily change to the left lane, because chances are my exit, especially if my exit's coming up, because I don't want to get boxed into the left lane and miss my exit. Mm-hmm. Um, but I will sometimes actually speed up to close the distance between me and the next car on the freeway already on the freeway to give the person merging. A little yeah. But then that space. asshole might, might slam on his brakes. Maybe. I mean, I, I, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't close the distance to the point where I'm right on the other guy's bumper. I mean, I, I keep a, a relatively safe distance between, but by and large, if you if you're on the freeway, generally the, the, the worst thing you can do on the freeway is merge into traffic at the wrong speed. Yep. Or just just like so when you when you're on the on ramp and you're looking up at the highway, because most on ramps you're going up. I mean sometimes it's down or flat, but you you're you the what you should be paying attention to is the car in front of you, if there's a car in front of you, and that entire lane on the highway that you're about to merge to and you should tailor your speed 
to slide into that. That's mm-hmm. that's your job on the on ramp, like you said. But too many people view it as just like it's like a cruising lane. Yeah, and, and yeah. everyone should Those... just yield to them and and be nice and invite yeah, them onto yeah. the freeway. Yeah, I'm a real prick when it comes to people. Like when there's like let's say there's an axe or like a lane closure up ahead, mm-hmm. and it's one that wasn't like. Well, hell, even sometimes it's one that's telegraphed. You get those people, like, because they'll, they'll start putting up cones and shit, like, 10 miles before the fucking road construction. At least they do here in the state. Yeah. I'd be like, left lane closed ahead. And, you know, okay, left lane's closed ahead. I'm going to get in the right lane. Right? But you'll get that asshole who thinks that, like, so a lot of people start moving over and, you know, zipper merging into the one lane that's going to be the open lane. And then you get some asshole back there that's driving like 90 miles an hour thinking that they can use that now free lane as the passing lane. I won't let you in ever, ever. Nope. If you pass me and then get stuck because you were ignoring all the merge signs and you thought you could just get in front of everybody, I will not let you in. No, vehicular vehicular welfare like letting someone in and shit like that is oh yeah i've seen this i've seen this uh jock nerdy just sent this to me i'm gonna share it i've seen this out there what if i told you the on-ramp is designed for you to reach the same speed as traffic before merging (laughs) yeah that's exactly it yeah what a concept And the only leniency I'll grant is during very, very inclement weather. Yeah. Well, and that's probably more for your safety, you know. Well, yeah. (laughs) But again, like, because, well, at least here, it's it's strange in winter. Um, Summer is generally not an issue. But in winter, it it can be an issue because you got, there's such a range that people drive because basically the speed limit becomes, you know, whatever safe to drive at during like a snowstorm or whatever. But that's a very subjective thing, you know, and it really depends on the vehicle you're driving. Right. So if you're mm-hmm. driving this little tiny fucking, you know, glorified roller skate, you're not going to, and, and the snow is like three inches deep, you know, that shit's pulling you everywhere. Like every little rut in the snow is like pulling your car left and right. And you're like, You know, you're practically plowing snow with your front bumper. It's tough driving, right? Mm -hmm. Then along comes, you know, Jimmy Bob and his pick up truck. And yeah, but but it's rear wheel drive. But he goes by you 90 miles an hour in four wheel drive. Mm -hmm. So like, how do how do you guess what you what speed you're supposed to merge to on on the freeway? Um, Boy, that's a tough one. Now, generally, they keep the freeways pretty clean. That's the first. That's the top one of the higher priorities, at, at least where I live uh, is to keep the, the, the freeways um, as clear as possible. Cause that's where the, the speeds are, are going to be higher. Um, but then you can get black ice too. And that like, especially on overpasses that, you know, what, what amazes me is, is usually in the winter when it, when it starts to turn, you get that first snowfall and everybody in Wisconsin forgot over the summer, how to drive in snow. Yeah. But then everybody remembers after the, from there on in. So that first snowfall, first significant snowfall, you see a lot of cars in the ditches because they just they forgot snow is slippery. Uh, somehow over the summer that like slipped their mind because driving in snow it does take getting used to it. It is a skill. Like you see, like someplace down like Texas gets like a half an inch of snow, and they got to shut down the whole fucking state because nobody knows how to fucking drive in snow in Texas. They barely ever get it right here and i'm going to guess wisconsin is not too different than most of the midwest rhetorical so michigan too um you you do have a lot of people who think four-wheel drive makes ice sticky right and it's very rewarding to see those people in the ditch after they pass you Mm -hmm. so they they go like look look four-wheel drive helps it's nice but it doesn't make snow sticky and it doesn't make ice sticky and you can go in the ditch just as easy as a car. So like you don't probably shouldn't be driving like, like, like it's a summer day uh, because you got four wheel drive in your pick up truck. 
Mm, yeah, huh. I'll be I'll be waving and smiling at you when you're like you blew by me. You you, you like you you know you sent a, a tidal wave of snow into me while I'm being a little bit more cautious. And then you know I, I just say to myself, "Yep, yeah, see you in the ditch in a few miles." And sure enough, like it's 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 it it really is heartwarming to see those fuckers in a ditch. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Because you know, like, of... provided it's not like flipped and on flames or anything, because like obviously I don't want them to die or anything, but like sliding into a ditch on most freeways here is is just like you 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 roll down the grass a little bit and you're stuck. Like mm-hmm. you're not hurt. <laughs> but but I mean if you if you manage to roll your vehicle, mm, yep, mm, you're probably hurt. <laughs> Speaking of Texas, small time republics here. And now we're, we're becoming ring into focus here. He's talking about <laughs> Texas tornado. Kerry Von Erich was created by climate change. That guy has a crazy story. So he had like half of a foot when he went to WWF because he'd gotten into an accident. And that's kind of why he didn't really go that far. But hey, mm. small time Republic, his theme music in WWF was amazing. Like just what a great theme. Jim I Johnston. I remember him. Yeah, he kind of had, he was, you know, one of the Von Erichs. If you've never heard about them, there's a Dark Side of the Ring episode. There's mm. a couple of documentaries, one that's independent, and then the one that's by uh, 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 WWF. And, you know, both of them are pretty good, but everyone in that family died except for, uh, shit, I think it was Kevin, and he lives in Hawaii now and stuff, but they all oh. died tragically in different ways. Really screwed up. But um, yeah, Small Time Republic. Uh, check out his theme if you've never heard it. But Jim Johnston, the guy that made all the wrestling themes for WWF from like 85 until about four years ago. He's on uh, he's on Twitter and I tagged him in something and uh, about two months ago and he retweeted it. Uh, so I'm going to continue cool. doing that and see if we can get him on to, to talk about his music because man just legendary like half for me in the 80s and 90s and 2000s like half of the experience is like the entrance and he was a big part of. oh yeah that's the flashiest part yeah Mm -hmm. yeah the ministry thing yeah you know and you got that music that just really kind of just pumps you up like like you Mm -hmm. know i mean it it, it's just kind of good old-fashioned like arena rock but you know it's not necessarily always rock but um, you know, speaking of wrestling, I, I did on in Twitter. I, I did, I did see a tweet. I don't know who who tweeted it out or liked it or whatever it caused it to be in my feed because I don't follow him. But it was nice to see like there was a little video message from uh, Hacksaw Jim Duggan there that I saw the other day. Yes, this, uh, he's in remission. His cancer is in remission. Yep. And he, like, I watched the video because I'm like, I know that guy. And then it's like, oh yeah, okay, that. That's him. He even did like the ho oh, at the end of the thing, and I thought, like, oh, that was that was, that was pretty sweet. Yeah, that, and that the... brought a smile on my face because I'm like, you know, he's like really nice. Yeah. yeah, in our private DMs uh, with the guys from Four Corners, I said after that came out, and I'm like, uh, Jake the Snake versus Hacksaw Jim Duggan for uh, uh, the next AEW pay per view. <laughs> <laughs> No, that's something Vince would do. I don't think AEW would ever do that, for yeah, sure. Think, yeah, yeah. Um, I just thought it was neat to, to, to see that. That was kind of a you know a, a feel good. It's occasionally nice to encounter a couple of those on your feet as you're reading the rest of the trouble that everybody else puts out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and he did that at the end. If you, yeah, you're roboting again. He did that at the end, Melissa. The Hope. <laughs> what a great, great gimmick. Um, fucking two by four. You're still roboting. Well, fuck my internet. Are you on Wi-Fi or are you on your uh, Ethernet? No, I am on Ethernet. I don't. My computer is plugged right in. Trying to find this story that I should have had pulled up, but you know what happened. I didn't have any of the links ready, so I'm on mm-hmm. bounding into comics. But it's about this uh, 
antitrust thing with the merger. Did you get to read about that? With what? The merger. There's an antitrust concern. What merger? Warner. Oh, Warner and uh, Discovery? Yep. No, I did not. Let me see if I can find it here. Yeah, usually, guys, I have all this shit pulled up. But again, since we weren't really going live when we should have been. Well, of all the other media mergers that they've allowed, they're they're going to they're going to nitpick over this one. Yeah, that's why I want to read the article to find out why. And now my like, fucking dark mode isn't working. Damn it. Like, what does Discovery own? I, I, well, I guess we'll read the article. Well, that yeah, that Discovery streaming service is supposed to have all kinds of shit. Right, but like Disney owns Disney Plus and like pretty much all of Hulu. And that's not a concern. Right. All right, here we go. Let me find it. I got the dark mode to come back on. Man, they post so many articles, it's it's easy to, to lose something unless you've saved it. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's J.K. Rowling. There's Boba Fett. Yeah, this is something else we were going to hit if we had enough time, especially before Dale left. But this Wheel of Time, the guy that finished writing the books after Robert Jordan passed away, he's criticizing the TV show. Well, no surprise. Yeah. And not only that, but I, I don't like... I don't like this, how they have this website set up. Like I can only see a few stories at a time. Just give me a list. Like back in the day, you know, like I don't need these big tiles. Like I'm on a mobile platform. Yeah. But they just, that's the trend. There it is. Cause AOC is the thumbnail here. Mm. All right. Let me throw this up on the screen. Let's see what's going on here. Discovery owns bad shark movies <laughs> that's hilarious blake <laughs> and greg is going to beat his router with the two by four already done yeah so u.s congress has antitrust beef with warner discovery merger which could negatively impact cnn and dc comics so at&t assets such as CNN and DC Comics could be turned inside out in a good way by the in and by in a good way by the incoming merger of Warner Media and Discovery into Warner Discovery and Congress is taking action. Uh, in a letter obtained by the Hollywood Reporter and sent to Attorney General Merrick Garland and Justice Department Antitrust Chief Jonathan Cantor. 30 Democrat congressmen, <laughs> he used the correct uh, adjective there, descriptor, including Elizabeth Warren and Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, said the merger raises significant concerns over the competition in the media and entertainment industry. So again, to your point, this is like one of how many that we've seen of these super mergers over the last, what, 10 years? Right, and I wouldn't even consider this one a super merger compared to the other ones because, like, Hell what no. assets? What assets does Discovery have? Like, I know CNN and everything's Warner, but what does Discovery have? Yeah, and, and just think about Disney. Well, like, how was how was AT and T merging with or buying Warner in the first place? Not and you know, not a trust, but then merging with Discovery, it is a trust. Because yeah. AT&T was is is in the distribution game as well with 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 their their um 
the UVerse service and, and whatnot. Yeah, but just, you know, with Disney, think of all the properties you have. You've got Marvel, you've got Star Wars, you've got the Muppets, right? You've you've got right. what Winnie the Pooh now. I mean, just all that shit. It's like and you're that, telling yeah, me and that. not counting not counting their cable assets as well, you know. Yeah. ESPN, ABC, you know, uh, the the Disney Channel. Um, yep. They they own they own several cable. Hulu, channels. right? They have an interest in Hulu. Yeah. They have a majority mm-hmm. stake in Hulu now because yeah, they base they essentially bought out Fox's portion of it when they bought Fox. Mm-hmm. And they had a, a significant stake in it in the first place, so. This transaction raises significant antitrust concerns, the letter said. In particular, the merger threatens to enhance the market power of the combined firm and substantially lessen competition in the media and entertainment industry, harming both consumers and American workers. What? I, yeah, I just don't see how... Mm Mm-mm. This one versus the other ones, right, is a problem. Well, not only that, but you maybe know, maybe they har- maybe they also oppose the the other mergers as well. I don't know. But harming consumers and American workers, I can think of a lot of stuff in recent history that has hurt them more than this merger would. Well, I mean, if you don't want to hurt consumers, then just throw CNN off the air. Yeah, yes, yeah, hurt anyone. I mean, like, especially considering the conduct of their hosts. I mean, just locally in their office building, it's it's a danger to work there. Yeah. In light of these concerns, we respectfully urge the department, and that's a proper noun, to conduct a thorough review of this transaction to ensure that it does not harm American consumers and works by illegally harming competition. Yeah, again, this is all bizarre. Like, why why this one? Um, if these are real, tenable concerns, AT&T CEO John Stinky isn't moved by Congress's antitrust qualms when letters like the one at hand are a regular thing that creeps up like a symbolic gesture during the closing of a merger. Having been through a number of these transactions in my career, getting letters from members of Congress is not unusual. Stinky said after the oppositional letter unfounded, calling the oppositional letter unfounded. When you have a lot of members of Congress, there's always going to be those that have a different lens they want to put on something. The antitrust letter coincided with a workshop about competition in labor markets conducted on December 6th and 7th by the Justice Department and the Federal Trade Commission. Beyond that, there's speculation that Dem congressmen who wrote it are actually expressing frusta- frustration out of fear the new Warner Discovery conglomerate will have a negative effect on CNN. <laughs> there it is. Does that make sense? Beyond that, there's speculation that the Dems who wrote it are expressing frustration out of the fear that the Warner Discovery conglomerate will have a negative effect on CNN. Then you have this piece of shit Brian Stelter here. Gosh, that guy's just a real life George Costanza weirdo. That's what he is. Uh, yeah, he's he's a CNN host that spends all of his time watching and complaining about Fox news. It's, it's bizarre. Um, Alaric is back with some criticism of the wheel of time show. Everyone check out my video from Monday. If you haven't yet, I'm sure you all have, but I go into wheel of time and I go into Lord of the Rings and foundation. And I even talk about starship troopers and it's a video you should see. So definitely check it out and and share it because it's something that, ironically, I think it was freaking Vox, I think, did an article that I found after my video that's kind of on the same topic that I'm 
writing about and it's basically like why are we getting so many unfaithful adaptations and you know why is it being allowed to happen so check out my video um yeah family selling out <laughs> yeah uh stilter fired his babysitter because she wasn't vaxxed yeah what a piece of shit anyway discovery that ceo doesn't surprise me yeah discovery ceo david zaslav will be in charge of the new entity after the merger closes next year. And he promised to move to Los Angeles to be hands-on with the creation of the company's content. Uh, okay. Is that, who are these guys? I hope that's not him. He's like, anyway, I'm not going to say it. In November, Zaslav said to the Paley Center's Paley International Council Summit webcast, I am moving to California because... That is where the content is made. This is a content company, according to The Hollywood Reporter, and a salvo that further indicates he is a money man that will be beholden to profits than an agenda. Okay. Yeah, something that shareholders would welcome. <laughs> yeah. If they, want their, if, they, if they want their share prices to go up. Um, yeah. I, yeah, I, I can believe that there's concern over CNN. I, I also think that these if you looked i'm i'm guessing that these congressmen um always write letters anytime there's a big merger they 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 oppose all of them oh yeah that's what like he's saying like, yeah like it, it would not surprise me that that you know elizabeth warren was would be against you know disney acquiring fox and all the right. you know basically every merger that's out there that that forms a bigger company she's going to be opposed to um, right because that's just that's how they operate i don't see this one like like i said from a consumer standpoint and and just looking at it like i, I don't see how this one is is worse um and, and to to talk about antitrust and and better for consumers in a world where you have basically three streaming services completely dominating the entire market yep and, and and you know which which is basically it's it you know Amazon Netflix and Disney, mm -hmm. and, and you know and then and then you have uh, a, another major player with with very deep pockets, a lot of cash, Apple. Mm -hmm. Where do you now, think really HBO think... Max sits? Oh, phew, way way down the line. Mm. But way I think it's an that... excellent service. It, it, that's yeah. The, the, that's not to say that that's a judgment on the quality. It's just the, mm -hmm. the, a judgment on 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 just where they are. Netflix right. had like an enormous head start. Um, you know, these companies like if you look at something like Paramount Plus, and, and with a debacle over over the new season of of Discovery and where it was going to stream. I mean, they, they had that issue where they 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 were going to yank it from, or, you know, got pulled from Netflix, and then basically wasn't going to be available internationally uh, because Paramount Plus doesn't have a footprint in a lot of these, you know, the rest of the world, and, and has no infrastructure to to stream. So, like, you you can't get Paramount Plus if you're in Europe. A lot of places in Europe, as far as I know. So, like, if you weren't one of those things, they had you weren't going to be able to watch the new Star Trek show. Uh, to the point where I think they ended up putting on, on some free service or something in, in those markets um, just so people could watch it because it was going to be like a year before they were going to be able to see the, like, the latest season of Star Trek, which is supposedly their flagship show. Right. Uh, the, the, these, these other services are just way, way behind in just capability of, 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 of commanding the, the, the worldwide numbers that, that uh, Netflix and Disney already has. I mean, remember, it took Disney quite a while to roll out um, internationally as well. It, it, like, it was available in the United States, and then it was several, several months on the line that it was available in, in other countries. It just takes time. And a yeah. lot of capital. Uh, and just an enormous amount of capital. Um, yeah, I I think, honestly, what what's bad for both companies is good for the world. So I, I hope they merge and go bankrupt. Yeah. Cause honestly, like I you know, I think nothing would be better than than DC just collapsing. 
and, you know, just the same as I think that you know, nothing would be better than Warner Brother or, or uh, uh, Marvel collapsing. I think it would be hilarious. So we've already, it says here, we've already seen signs of this before. AT&T initiated the sale of Warner Media to Discovery. They're dumping Crunchyroll, which won't be part of HBO Max as of January. And Rooster Teeth was split in two starting in 2019. What the hell are they talking about? They're, um, they're, they're both uh, U.S. distributors of, of anime. Okay. Afterward, its principal players were fired, which happened company-wide in the mass layoffs from every corner of Warner, including DC Comics. Ethan Van Skyber and others predict DC will get sold to some extent, but it won't be the first domino to fall once the merger goes through and Zaslav takes control, or so Clownfish TV's Neon guesses. Uh, cable news giant CNN looks like they will be in more trouble. By the way, I thought I heard something. They're trying to make a CNN Plus streaming service. Is that correct? That is that is correct. That that came out. Wow. That became kind of public news when when Chris Wallace announced that he was leaving Fox News, and he was going to CN. He's going to CNN Plus. Okay. Now, I think, like, I don't watch the cable news channels. I, n- none of them. I don't anymore. Um, I find, like, you know, even, and to, to be honest, and, and, and I'm a conservative, okay? Not going to, like, I'm not going to pretend at all that I am, like, a down the middle guy. I'm, I'm fucking, I'm right. Um, I can't stand Hannity and I can't stand Tucker Carlson. Mm -hmm. I think, I think Hannity is Hannity is the radio version of Sarah Palin. (laughs) As far as intellect goes, like there's so many much, much, much smarter. um, And, and honestly just better uh, conservative radio hosts out there and, and, and conservative um, outlets out there than, than what he provides. I, I think his is very, it's all, it's a lot of platitude. It's a lot of bumper stickers and not a whole lot of nuance. Um, you know, Oh, you're a great American. You know, Oh no, you're a great American. Like, you know, the, that let freedom ring song is nauseating to me. Like, I just, I just don't like it. I don't hate the guy personally. I just don't like him. I don't like his show. <laughs> and I, I, I think um, Tucker Carlson is is basically just a wannabe Bill O'Reilly trying to try to play the the populist angle too much. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just don't care for him either. Again, don't like don't want anything bad to happen to him. I'm not like anti them. I just I don't like their content. So like, there's nothing on Fox to draw me in. But good riddance, honestly, to Chris Wallace because fuck him and his his pathetic debate performance um in this last election cycle that was that was some that was candy crowley like level bullshit right there um the the way he handled the i think it was the first debate it was a mm-hmm. it was a, a, a shit show and a joke his questioning was yeah. awful uh he was chummy with 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 biden com, like super combative with with trump um and and dishonest like i like i think him leaving um him leaving fox news is the best thing to happen to fox news since they got rid of that piece of shit mississippi cocksucker oh uh uh yeah plastic face shepherd smith yeah shep yep i could oh i hated him he was such a hand-wringing whiny baby you you know who else on that network? Geraldo. <laughs> yeah. What a what an utter piece of garbage he is and always has been. Who Just ever some of the has stuff taken him said. seriously? Yeah, exactly. Like like how do you have a career after that vault episode, man? Like, yeah. Like you're tabloid at best, buddy. Mm-hmm. Like like nobody 
Nobody in their right mind thinks Her- Geraldo is a serious journalist. His takes are utter garbage. I mean, just. Oh. Oh, I, I will say, like, I love Greg Gutfield. He's awesome. Oh, yeah, yeah. He, some, he has some, some stuff I don't always there. agree with, but yeah. Like, oh, I, oh, God, I remember. I couldn't. I didn't like Greg either. Yeah. Yeah, I had, a, I had a boss that could do an impression of her that was that was spot on. But and it here's the thing. It Troy. wasn't her it wasn't her voice. It was the fact that she always covered like the like the tabloid missing person stuff, like uh, you know yeah. the, like like those kind of stories, they're just nonstop. And it's like, ugh, these are local news stories, just sensational. Yeah, she she did like probably 365 days on uh uh Natalie uh whatever the hell her name was, the one in Aruba. Well, that and, and the one that was like the, the with Congress, uh, the, Jorvan Vandersloot or whatever his what name was. What was that congressman back? Oh, God, this is early 2000s, I think. Uh, the, it was a sleazy congressman and like one of his like staffers disappeared or whatever. From yeah. The apartment. Uh, yeah. Uh, what was, what was her Jewish name? girl. Like she did like a whole year of that one, and then the and then like mm-hmm. a whole year out of the the Scott Peterson trial, and yeah. Uh, oh, did you hear? Um, they reconvicted him. Good, just like he's last week. Yeah, just good, like last he's week. Guilty. And what's creepy is he doesn't look any different. Huh. It's weird. He might have gotten a little bit of grain in his hair, but he looks the same. Um, but yeah, Trey, you know, what they can do is they can do like Friday night specials where Rachel Maddow like reports in only a bikini. That will bring the subscribers in, buddy. <laughs> oh, okay. They just won't be men. That's the difference. <laughs> uh, yeah, Chandra Levy. Yep. Mm-hmm. Ah, that's it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Thank you, rhetorical. Good. Did, did oh, you yeah. know that Stossel, one? Did you Google dude. that one? Ah, Stossel's all right. No, oh, he's. I think I don't always agree with him, but I think he's just some of the his techniques yeah. I like. That's yeah. Oh yeah, you're talking about uh David Schultz. They did a whole episode of of him on a uh, Dark Side of the Ring. Excellent. And he's still alive and he's he uh he's doing okay. He makes stuff and he he sells it. I can't remember what the fuck it was from the episode, but yeah, Dave Schultz is. Oh, and he uh and John Stossel like is is still he he basically still wants more money than what he got from that. So he's still mad about it. He's in the episode. They actually get him to go on and do an interview. Um, Laura Ingram is good. Yeah, she kind of annoys me, to be honest. Not a big um, fan. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of hers either. I mean, there's a lot of who, uh, like, if you pay attention to Twitter and, and you know the the dark side of Twitter, um, there's a lot of uh, hubbub about like these text messages that they sent the the White House chief of staff. I read them and I'm like, and and hers is one of them. It was hers, uh, it was Laura Ingram, Sean Hannity, and Brian Kilmeade. And like, the, the, the people are talking like this is some like huge smoking gun. And I'm like, I read the text messages, and they're basically the gist of the text messages are like, hey, um, do something. This, this is like, and I'm, I'm paraphrasing, but like, this is horrible optics. Yeah. Like I, I don't know how that's a smoking gun or like any kind of shot at either Fox or the administration or or the guy I forget it Meadows, who's text message. I'm like, they're making the case that like they were like, at least for the journalists, you know, th- these three people, they're like, hey, you know, get Trump out there and 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 try and you know make a statement, try and put a stop to it. this. Looks horrible. This is like bad optics. They weren't texting because they honestly thought like a coup was actually going to take place. Right. They were texting from out of political expedience because they're concerned that it looked awful and it did look awful. And Mm -hmm. guess what happened? Like it was used. It's still to this day being used as a clutch to beat up 
anybody who supported Trump. Like, you hey, know, listen hey. to this. Go ahead. Oh, I, I was just reading on here. Okay. I saw this. I would like to see CNN evolve back to the kind of journalism that it started with and actually have journalists, which would be unique and refreshing. Woo. Yeah. I don't, I don't honestly know if that would actually be a good move. Um, I mean, like, it, especially in the evening, um, your primetime lineup, like I'm, I'm fine with partisan, like I'm fine with Matto being on. I, I, I'm fine with the primetime lineups mm-hmm. having opinion shows and they can be slanted as long as like, just be honest with your slant. Um, but to have like wall to wall coverage on, on particular issues, ignore other issues throughout the day as well. I mean, I guess Fox could be accused of the same thing to some degree, but, um, like, I don't like, I think if they just went hard news, like, what are you going to fill 24 hours a day with? Yeah. Cause like, l- look, I can, I can spend 20 minutes online and get like all the news stories of the day. Mm hmm. So why would I watch your channel? Why would I suffer through 300 reverse mortgage commercials, 700 gold and precious metal commercials, 1500 mesothelioma commercials, and, and, and whatever else that, that, that gets advertised on these networks when I could spend just a few minutes online and get all that news? Yeah. Why point. would I tune in? Like hard news isn't going to bring ratings. Like so, like it, it's it's fine. But then, like maybe try and like like I, I think a lot of people wouldn't have a problem with CNN if they just come out and say it. Right. You know, like I like I don't think like like Fox News is like you know fair fair and balanced, and, and you know when that slogan started, they they actually did have a like. You know, one of their primetime shows was Hannity and Combs, right? That was their, the, it was a debate show. Well, not a very good debate, but. Yeah. It was a show that was co-hosted by uh, one right, you know, one right winger and one left winger. You know, Hannity was the right, Combs was the left. And yep. most often, more often than not, it was just, you know, shouting over each other anyway. But um, just if they, if they just. If CNN would just come out and just own it, like, look, we're fucking liberal. We're in the tank. Like, like it's clear as day to everybody except for them. So, like, I, I don't know why they're just resisting. Because, uh, you know, MSNBC is beating them for Christ's sake. Yeah, that's that's bad when you're at that level. But I think this article, I think th- they take a big leap here that I think is wishful thinking at, at best. Should that come to pass? They're talking about, you know, CNN going um, into real journalism and less narrative pushing. Should that come to pass, it would mark a loss for the mainstream media that Neon believes will cause Hollywood and DC Comics to panic. After all, they'd be next in the shakeup and the days of woke storytelling might then be over. But it won't be because they're not going to be the one company that stops. None of them are going to stop. (laughs) <laughs> I mean, the people leading these companies are are so wrapped up in it that they're not going to stop. And plus, you get that you get that woke money that we've we've been talking about, and it is a real thing, guys. So, one company just because they merge and he says, "Hey, I want CNN to you know to do real journalism," doesn't mean that gay Superman is going to go away. That black Superman is going to go away. It, I think that's a huge right. leap yeah, no. and wishful thinking. No, he's got I want it to. Like, I want it to be true, but I don't think it is true. N- n- no way. Like they'd have to clean house so deep in those organizations. They like I I I, I just doubt it. But I, I kinda wanna go back because the chat added some here. Like somebody said, like, don't forget about the Medicare helpline commercials. Very, very yeah. true. Remember the ones that had Fred Thompson, like after his failed bid? Oh, he yeah. Just, he he turned to those types of things like, 
you should get a reverse mortgage because I'm Fred Thompson and I was on a bunch of TV shows and I ran for president. I mean, that guy was like the biggest dud in, in uh I actually liked history. him personally, but yeah, he wasn't a very good, he, he wasn't a particularly uh, charismatic politician. He's like, your, he's just your straight man in, in a movie. Like, yeah, he's, like he's the, the you know, he's not going to give you any comedy or anything. He's just the, the serious straight guy. Um, I, the commercials that honestly irritated me to the core the most were the ones where they'd show it, it was always it was from motorized scooters. And they'd show on the commercial this like, you know, grandpa there with his like 4,000 square foot fucking house that he's retired in. And he's like, and I got my scooter at no cost to me. And I'm like, fuck you, asshole. That's a cost to me. I'm looking at your fucking house. You can afford your fucking couple thousand dollar goddamn fucking scooter. Pay for it yourself, you bastard. (laughs) That's always what I thought. Because I was just like, you know. Um, I, I knew at a young age that, that the likelihood of, of, um, those programs being available anywhere near their current form by the time that I'm eligible is just uh, zero chance. So those, those commercials always irritated the fuck out of me. Like, you know what, like if you, Like, if you're a poor bastard and you got not not a pot to piss in and you need a mobility (laughs) scooter, like, you know, I I could see that. But, like, they always always show these fucking, like, fucking big-ass houses with grandma and grandpa and their grandkids and, 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 you know, the boat in the driveway and all this other shit. And I'm like, and I got my scooter at no cost to me. I, I was like, fuck you. Pay for your own fucking scooter, Gramps. Yeah. I didn't get a car at Someone... no cost to me because I can't walk all the way to work because I'm too fat. So I should the government should buy me a car and it should be a deficit no spending to got me this, everyone. Yeah. yeah. Commercials are um, more likely to get me to not buy a product. They are ten thousand to one more likely to get me to not buy a product than actually buy a product. Agree. Because I find <laughs> most com- I find most commercials to be completely insulting to my intelligence. I hate the tokenism in them. They 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 are they they, they irritate me because like the the things that they try and do and is like who the f- like you think this is, I'm gonna fall for this? Fuck you! That's an in- you're insulting my intelligence. I'm never buying your product. I keep a list in my head of like advertisers that piss me off. Yeah. Make a running list of that shit. Yeah, I'm just like, um, not, not buying you. Your shit. Sarah, Sarah McLaughlin is what you're talking about, Trey. Sarah McLaughlin. Um, oh, yeah. I, like, remember the Sally Struthers fucking starving oh, African yeah. kids commercials before? Yeah, that was she's before crying. like South Park destroyed her career. <laughs> yeah. Like season D- one of South Park, I think it was. Jesus. Dan says been to all the Hollywood writers rooms and some have stopped using Latinx. This means that in 45 years, we will see a change in Hollywood wokeness. Subscribe to my Patreon for more. <laughs> exactly. I, uh, what's funny is there was a story on, uh, uh, this <laughs> shit. What's it called? This Gucci show. You know what I'm talking about? Have you heard of this Gucci show? No. In any in any event, this this story on on the uh, the piece on the uh, on the show said, okay, you know, blah blah blah, and they're talking about it, and it was talking about Italian X Italian X. I guess that's oh, now a thing. Sake. So the, every gen- they're going to do that with they're going to try and do it with every gendered language. I guess so. Which, by the way, is most languages mm-hmm. <laughs> gendered. Like like English is is the uh, is unusual. <laughs> okay, yeah, like, go go for it. Like you, you, you're it, gonna get you're gonna get you think you're gonna get Italians to, to call themselves Italian X? Go for it. Right. Yeah, I can think of some pretty uncomfortable ones right off the top of my head. Extreme <laughs> checks. Oh, Trey Trey is Black X. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not going to go there. I was going to say something, but um, Hunter the Madman, thanks for being here. Latinx makes absolutely zero linguistic sense. It can't even be pronounced in Spanish well, and Latinos make makes more sense grammatically. Yeah, I agree. Uh, seems like such a bizarre leftist thing and blatant white savior guilt behavior to assume Hispanics would even want the term in the first place. LOL. Yeah. Well, well yeah, the problem there it. is, <laughs> yeah, the problem there is not only do you get just, you know, for lack of a better term, you get the, uh, the liberal white people that come up with this, but you also get, I think leaders in the Hispanic community that embrace it, like the ones that are at the top of the food chain, because mm. I've like, you know, where I live, there's some organizations that use it and obviously they're run by Hispanic people, but they're the ones making that decision and not like the everyday people that don't even know what the hell it means. That's the thing. Like, you know, we, we know about all this stuff, you know, everyone on panels and stuff because we're talking about it. But in real life, including my family, like they don't know what the hell I'm talking about half the time. Like, hey, this show is woke. What what does that mean? Well, you see, yeah, you know, you look what look what Superman did. Look what Luke Skywalker and they're like, Oh yeah, I noticed that now. And I'm like, Yeah, so start paying attention more. Um, and just like with this right here. I guarantee that people, they haven't even heard of this before unless they've come across an organization that actually uses it because they don't pay attention to news and stuff like that around it. But we talk about that stuff all the time, or, not just you and me, but everyone right, yeah. in this this uh, extended community. So, yeah. Well, and then, and then I think you have some people who are legitimately like they get told by somebody, you know, they get they get told by Karen that like you can't say Latino, you got to say it in Latin, yeah, Latinx, and and they'll be mm -hmm. like, oh, I didn't know, and and they'll start using it, yeah, because they figure like, oh, they don't want to get they don't want to get shamed for for using the wrong term anymore, right? Because we, we have a whole history of terms that like you know you can't use anymore, and I'm not just talking about like the hard N word or something like that, but, yeah. Um, obviously, that would be like the super example. Um, <laughs> But you know, there's other like, oh, you can't call them that. You, oh, you, you can't you can't say somebody's retarded anymore. Yeah, obviously that that's 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 offensive. Um, so oh, you got to say like mentally mentally handicapped or just handicapped or something like you know something like chromosomally challenged. Would that be one. <laughs> um, They're not challenged. What are you saying? <laughs> But yeah, like so, like th th we have a whole hit, and and yeah, it, it's not just race, it, you know, gender, disability, and things like that. Oh, you can't use that now; that's offensive. And then people are like, "Oh, I didn't know that," and then they just they just change, they start using the word, and and it, it, I feel bad for these poor fuckers because they're gonna get up there and they're gonna be, like, "Yeah, you're Latinx," and you know, yeah, some 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 Latino is gonna be like, "What the fuck do you call me?" Yeah. <laughs> And they're gonna be like, but, 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 like they're like, I there can't needs win. to be a scene. Yeah, there needs to be a scene in like one of those parody movies because that would be actually be funny. Yeah, like what the fuck did you just call me? Mm -hmm. And it would be just funny, like because I, I'm the type of person that like if I encounter somebody who was generally that naive about that word, I would go back after them and be like, don't ever say that that's that's like calling him the n-word and just like really confuse the fuck out of him be like that guy's trying to get you like that guy's trying to get you knocked out just really just fuck with people because yeah. i mean like I, I like the thing is it's like a lot of people don't even use latinos they use hispanic Mm -hmm. Like so, like like if you listen to most people, they don't. Most people don't even use the word his Latino. They use Hispanic. Like 
it, it, it's just one of those things that 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 people sit around and and they're like, well, what can we be offended with? A oh, uh, Latino is gendered. Be offended. They're just making shit up just to you know get generate clicks. You, you see it all the time, and mm-hmm. and again, I, like I, I think half the reason they're doing it is just for lulls, and the other half is for clicks. They're, they're like, I don't even know if I don't even know if these people take it seriously. But then, like the academics, and then you get some really you get some people who are be like, oh yeah, that makes sense. That that is horrible. I didn't even know. And, you know, and then they take the ball and run with it. Like I, I, I think half the shit that we're encountering now, like started off as some fucking joke, and then it just, get, you know, then then people were like, "Oh wow, that makes sense, man." Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's it's all stupidity. But yeah, this this merger isn't going to make shit of a difference um well certainly not with dc like if you're expecting this to make a D- or or probably cnn i mean and unless he like you know if he gets in there and 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 the first thing they do is they get rid of zucker then then you know some shit's gonna change it's it's not gonna make nerd properties less woke i mean that's oh, my prediction no. that's my prediction i'm going on the record as saying that. why and why would they change what because we what, keep puking money all over them yeah what motivation do they have to change at all they 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 have none none and you know like you know you're going to point like what cowboy bebop that that's going to be their big lesson or no no this is the new one right like if if we flood tons of money at a Sony movie that's coming out, that'll teach Hollywood. That'll teach the MCU a big lesson. Even though the Sony movie is twenty five percent stakeholded by the same company that yeah does the MCU, and it entirely is driven around a plot that's going on in. The MCU, but guys, guys, this this one's totally different. So if we if this one makes a billion dollars, it's going to be great because that'll show, right? So like, okay, do the math. It makes a it makes a billion dollars. Take fifty percent off of that, or sixty percent, depending on who you're listening to. But we'll say fifty percent goes to the studio. Five hundred million dollars, twenty five percent stake. That means Disney gets one hundred twenty five million dollars. Mm-hmm. So if Spider Man makes a billion dollars, Disney makes one hundred and twenty-five. Well, I mean less so because they staked well, what fifty, so they make seventy-five million dollars. Apparently, has a two hundred million dollar budget. Mm-hmm. So, you know, if, if your ticket costs ten dollars to go see Spider Man, understand that a buck fifty to two bucks is going directly into Disney's wallet. So don't tell me you don't support Disney if you're going to see Spider Man. <laughs> yeah, I do. just have no. I don't. And if you want to see like, it, fine. I don't like the character, and I even if I did, I hate the again, character. I don't care to see it. If it's something, if something good, a if gimmick. I saw a Batman movie coming out, and it was starring a performer I'd like to see as Batman, I probably wouldn't see it because. I don't want to support it. Plus, I can watch the Batman movies I like that I already have. So I don't need this constant reinvention of it. But guys, we got to wrap it up. We've been going almost three hours and it's 1230 in the fucking morning. Thanks for sticking around as long as you have. And sorry again for the difficulties. We know the issue now and it's simply because I would not update my computer when they wanted me to. So they took away functionality to force me to do it because they're assholes. Mm-hmm. But what do we have? Um, I assume casual rage on Thursday night on raging rhinos channel. Uh, uh yeah, I assume so. Haven't heard anything different. Uh, so we're going to do that. And then if you guys hadn't seen the schedule, then go to the community tab on YouTube on my channel. But, uh, the next three Fridays are off because I got a Christmas party this Friday. And then 
uh, Christmas Eve, the following Friday, and then New Year's Eve, the following Friday after that. So it'll pretty much just be indecent behavior. But next Monday, Tim is so popular. Yeah, we have a ring into focus next Monday, and then when Greg and I do come back for the first Friday of the year, we're gonna do off the treks on a Friday night. Because you know Friday I saw night, that. I was going to ask you that is that if that was a mistake or not. But. No, because Friday night I'm going to be rotating stuff up, and you know I'm sick of talking about like the issues on different streams. I want to talk mm-hmm. about enjoyable stuff on most of my streams. This stream right here is where we talk about the events and the issues. So, okay. yeah, yeah. Ooh, Star you're Trek right, is you're right. right. You're right, Melissa. Star Trek what? There's nothing really good happening in Star Trek at the moment. Well, well, coming up, we're going to find someone to be the referee. But coming up, not on this one, but on a different one, we're going to we're going to talk about um TNG versus Deep Space 9. Well, see, that's not fair cuz no, I'm not doing that. Why? Cuz I'm cuz I'm not watching fucking DS9. <laughs> well, then then you you can't say that um, you can't say that it's better. Well, I wouldn't say that DS Nine is better. Oh, I know you can't say anything. Is but better. I can't I can't argue specific point because like you could literally make up episodes and I'd be like, okay. <laughs> yeah, but I, I'm not a liar though. Uh, it's you, like you, against my personal code. You're yeah, but you'd violate your personal code to protect your precious DS Nine. No, I wouldn't. <laughs> but yeah, I, guys. I just I I do not want to I I I tried Tim. You know I tried. I talked to you about it. Like I just can't sit through fucking Kira. I hate her so much. Yeah. Like I like Michael Burnham more than I like fucking Kira. Wow, that's bad. That's fucking bad. I like fucking Tilly. And yeah. and androgynous no pronoun. They, them, thingamabobber, Adira. Um, <laughs> oh, and then they um, stole a name from Babylon 5 for that. Like, what the hell? Uh, so, it's, it's, just, it, it's really great. Like, it, Star Trek is so diverse. So they have the, nine, the non-binary born female person in love with the non-binary born male person. So essentially, yeah. they're a heterosexual couple. It's so weird. <laughs> like, I'm, just, I'm just like, oh, okay. <laughs> I guess, sure, you, I, okay. It's so weird. Like, wow, that that's like way out there, man. It's like, wow, the the chick loves a dude, the dude loves a chick. Okay. Yeah, alternative factory live. There's. <laughs> There's plenty of time to do all kinds of stuff, Blake. But yeah, um, Thursday night we'll be back on Casual Rage, and I'm sure Rhino wants to talk about more Book of Boba Fett and whatever else. And that shit starts soon, doesn't it? Uh, when it's, In the next it, next it couple of the weeks. End of the month? I think I so. It's the yeah. Like the 27th or some shit. Yeah. So he'll want to talk about that. Um, yeah, yay! But I, I see everyone in the Discord now. Thanks for joining. Um, mm-hmm. you know, and actually visit it and and have conversations and all that, and it'll be fun. It'll be our little corner of the internet. But yeah, guys, it'll be our hideaway. Yes, uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I think that's it. So we'll we're out of here, and on this channel, we'll see you again on uh. I guess on Monday night for Ring Into Focus. All right. Have a good one, guys.